What's going on, Schmodown fans? Welcome to another episode of Schmodown Backstage. It's 12.30 on Tuesday, and we're here to talk to you about all the goods, everything going on in the world of the movie trivia Schmodown. A big, quick shout-out to Gabriel LaRoe with this very first Super Chat here. Uh, to every stoner watching, happy 420. Let's get high. Well, a uh, message from Gabriel uh, to the other Schmodown fans that share that sentiment. It is a big happy 420 to all of you. Excited here to talk to you about movie trivia, about the best movie trivia league in the entire world, and of course, all the huge things that are happening. A lot of big matches since last week, a lot of big matches coming up, and of course, a huge pay-per-view event this Saturday. Movie trivia showdown free-for-all. Free-for-all five, is it? We skipped one, right? So this is free-for-all four, five. Somebody correct me on that one. It's one or the other. The free-for-all is coming up this Saturday. It's at noon. Uh, it's a big event. 40 competitors. You get uh, five competitors from every single faction get thrown in there. A few of us have already been confirmed. Uh, Dan Merle, of course, is confirmed. Adam Collins, myself, William Bibiani. The rest is all a mystery. Nobody knows who's going to be in there from what factions. But, of course, the last competitor standing gets a title shot of their choosing. Uh, and there are points on the line, of course, for the factions as well. Uh, if you receive the free-for-all MVP, which is voted on by a bunch of different people, you will receive three points. Uh, but this is all dependent on where you end up in the lineup. We've had incredible stories in the free-for-all in years past. Obviously, the biggest and most exciting story we have had is William the Beast Bibiani. Uh, he is he is the free-for-all legend. That's what he does. Uh, he came in as the number one competitor and nearly lasted the entire thing a couple of years back when, of course, Dan Merle was able to, to win it. But you never know what you're going to get. John Humphrey, a uh, 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 previous free-for-all MVP. Ethan Irwin has done very, very well in the past in the free-for-all. So uh, you just never know who's going to show up, you know? You never know who's going to be on the table and who's going to have a good showing. But I'm excited for it. Uh, I know every every Schmodown fan looks forward to this event. Uh, the one difference between the free-for-all now and, of course, the way we've done it in the past is it's the biggest reminder of the lack of actual physical community that we've gotten to have during this crazy year. Uh, the free-for-all traditionally is the event where everybody gets together, whether you're on the table or not, and you just get to hang out with everybody. It's kind of like the whole league gets to go somewhere and hang out. Uh, the 2019 free-for-all at the Globe Theater was one of the best events we've ever had. It was so much fun just because you get to see everyone and, and have a great time. And, of course, there was a bar there as well, which really made it a very special event for all of us. Uh, but anyway, guys, the free for all is coming up this Saturday. It's going to be at noon. Get your tickets now. It's available as a pay per view. If you go to the schmodownlive.com, you can get your tickets or patreon.com slash schmodown. Um, that's that is the easiest way to support if you guys want to have that exclusive access to you know, pay per view events, if you guys want to have exclusive access to exhibition events, uh, become a patron today. The $10 tier, there are a ton of perks. And right now, we're running three pay per views a month. So you get your matches early. Uh, you don't even have to worry about it. The link just gets sent out to you. Patreon.com slash schmodown to become that patron today. Now, of course, today we're here talking to a great slew of guests. We've got a few of them coming up. In a couple minutes, I'll be welcoming on the delinquent. Uh, himself, Lon Harris, who had a big win a week ago against Drew McQueen of the Godfather. Kind of a shocking uh, result, actually, that the Godfather, uh, I don't even want to say played as badly as he did. I just think I would have expected the Godfather to get some of the questions that he missed. Um, and Lon just looked like a, like a damn house. I mean, he was really, really good. So it's, a, it's a, a departure from the unfortunate performance we had seen out of the, the last uh, final exam match. So it'll be interesting to talk to the delinquent a little bit today to kind of see how he's feeling about that. But uh, always, always nice to come and do a victory lap. If you haven't checked out that match, it is available now. Our second guest coming up in a little bit has his first singles match of the year coming up. His first singles match in literally years. We're going to be talking to JTE, a uh, member of the Finstock Exchange. He'll actually be going up against none other than Schmodown Backstage's own Ben Goddard. Coming up very soon. Goddard, when when are you guys uh, playing against each other? When is that? That's coming up in the next week, all right? I think it's on Friday, actually. I think it's this Friday. Okay, yeah. So that'll be airing this Friday. So yeah, I knew I knew uh, initially that the, the the scheduling for the uh, filming of the match had been pushed back a little bit. So yeah, um, but uh, it's coming up here pretty soon. So you guys will get to talk to JTE a little bit. You know, he's part of a new team as well that is in this team's tournament. Uh, this team's tournament is going to be coming up pretty soon here, and you're going to see once again. You've got Paul Preston and Ben Goddard in there. You've got John Roca and JTE in there. You got myself and Dan Merle. You got Marisol and Adam Collins over in Deception. It's a big tournament. There's a lot of big teams. You got some rookie teams. A lot of stuff to look forward to. So we'll be talking to JTE here a little later in the show to get his feeling on that. 
And of course, a brand new rookie matchup this last week that debuted of Beth May versus Jessica Schloth. Uh, and we are going to see that matchup, uh, of course, talked about here by Jessica. She's going to be coming on the show a little bit later to chat about that with us, uh, welcoming a rookie onto the show. So tons of stuff going on in the Schmodown right now, as well as the fact that Schmodown free agency is happening right now. It's going on. Christian has been uh, has been keeping all of the the managers and everybody uh, you know up to speed, texting us. You know, this is what's going on here. This is who's next on the clock. And of course, Grace has been posting the updates of what people are actually doing um, on Twitter. So you guys have been able to see that. But uh, not a whole lot of movement in the free agency pool so far. I think a lot of people kind of feeling out their rosters right now, trying to decide if it's time to make an early move. Um, I've definitely seen some fans tweeting about this. I've seen some posts on Facebook about this. Um, but we are only, you know, because we only really started airing matches in February for the most part. We're just a very short way into the season. A lot can happen. A lot can change. And uh, it feels like the type of people who would get dropped are people who have probably played one match or even zero matches. And the people that be getting picked up off of this list are people that, you know, it's they, they weren't drafted in the first place. And so I think you're taking a chance if you're a manager by picking somebody up. I don't know that we're going to see any movement uh, at the moment, but I believe my faction currently, the dungeon is actually on the clock with the next move. So we'll have to see what happens uh, if the dungeon decides to make that move. If, you know, if Kaiser uh, decides that he wants to pull the trigger on any big time moves, but uh, welcome to the show. Everybody in here who's hanging out guys. Uh, Let's get some likes on this video. There's uh, so far, uh, we've been live for about five minutes, 150 of you guys watching, and only 53 have hit that thumbs up button. If you guys could do me a favor, and everybody watching the show, if you guys could just go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That does big things for the video. I know, I say it every week, I do, but it does huge things for the video. If you guys wouldn't mind just hitting the thumbs up on the video. And as I have my guests on the show today, I want to implore all of you guys your donations, your super chats, but specifically your Streamlabs, because they don't take 50%. Um, they are so instrumental to this show continuing on. Programming on this network, the ability to grow the schmo down, it does come from your support. So if you're watching and you have an idea and you just you want to be a part of the fun, either there's the Schmobot is on for $30 as a super chat or for, uh, I believe it's just $20 as a Streamlab. Uh, if you guys donate, it really does make an enormous difference. I'm not just saying it. It's not lip service, guys. It, it makes a huge difference. Uh, we try to hit goals. And sometimes, obviously, we have news we can break on the show. Or we have exhibition matches. But sometimes we don't. And we just need to just to ask you to support. So get in your stream lives. Get in your super chats. Um, I, would, I would love to hear what you guys have to say. And thank you to everybody who shows up to this show every single week to hang out. We're going to welcome to the show right now our first guest. He is a member of SWAG. He just picked up his, his first singles win of 2021. You, you know him formerly as the professor. You now know him as the delinquent, uh, a trivia titan, big fan of the movie Money Plane. And uh, we're going to be bringing him on the show right now. We welcome to the show the delinquent, Lon Harris. Lon, how are you doing, my friend? And we're muted, if we're muted. There we go. Hey, everybody. I made it. I figured out on? Zoom. It only took 16 months. Yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. There's a mute button, and sometimes <laughs> you don't hit the... buttons. Yeah. Yep. You join with computer audio, and sometimes you don't unmute, and then and then here we are. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah, process. man. Let's start with the most important you know, topic in the room, the movie Money Plane. Sure. You're, you're a big fan of the movie Money Plane. Fan. I've seen you tweet about it. <laughs> It's, a, it's an interesting term. I, I, I certainly enjoy the fact that the movie Money Plane exists. Yes. Uh, I, do I think it's a good movie? Of course, I do not. But I, I'm glad that it's out there. What is the word good, Lon? What does it really refer to? <laughs> right. you know, it got what? snubbed for production design. We'll just say that. I mean, listen, Kelsey Grammer showed up for three quarters of a day and he gave it 110%. All right. He's, there's, he left no stone unturned in that performance. I think you got to give it up at least to the, to the dedication of, of and Thomas Jane. Uh, Kelsey Grammer and Thomas Jane, they both get what movie they're in and are giving it their all. I think maybe with the Lawrence brothers is where things go awry. Is that, is that I, the, the Hollywood dream to make it so big that you can just be in straight to DVD movies for a million dollar paycheck for half a day's work? Yeah, I mean, really, Bruce Willis is, I think, the, yeah, the yes. titan he's, of this. He's hooked up yeah. with this uh, this Middle Eastern conglomerate that churns out a whole bunch of these direct-to-VODs every year, and he only ever had... It's, they're always like, it's a Josh Duhamel movie or a Kellen Lutz movie, and then like they're sliding Bruce into three scenes 
often he's just sitting down the whole time. Like they come up with an excuse. Like there's one where he's taken hostage. And so the, the whole movie, he's just in a chair on the phone, giving advice, like do what these that, guys say. And that's like, that's is all that, he is, is that the, is that the Prince of Venice or is that uh, perhaps no, is, that one? He's actually like, that one's pretty active. Marauders, he's like, maybe. Oh, or... Which one is the one where he's tied? It might be fire with fire. I think it might okay. be that one. Yeah, okay. Where, where My... that, that, which has an amazing, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio is the bad guy in that. And he gets, it's one of those, like, he gets killed four times. Okay, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. His, his death scene is he gets, like, blown up, stabbed, shot, and then he gets thrown out of a building. It's awesome. Yeah, the uh, I, I have a, a couple friends that have uh, had smaller parts in some of those movies. Yeah. And one, one buddy of mine who has worked on some of those movies told me that Willis doesn't even shoot he doesn't even shoot the reverse for the other actor. Oh yeah, no way. <laughs> he just shoots the he just shoots the one and he makes yeah. he makes the other actor shoot with his double. So he literally comes yeah. in for like a couple days and that's the movie. And then there everything was, else shot yeah. around him. There's another one and I forget which one this is. And it was so obvious in the scene that they're filming that his female co-star is feeding him his lines with her lines of dialogue. So she's like like, what are you doing here? And he'll go, what am I doing here? What are you doing here? And she'll be like, did you find the rock? And he's like, did I find the rock? Like, it's so obvious the way it's written that it's just like, I need to be prompted before every line. I'm not going to memorize your movie. Yeah, it's it's impressive stuff. Well, none of those movies qualify to be asked about in the movie trivia Schmodown, as, as, as far as I can tell. I do Thank feel goodness. upset that Money Plane is not uh, valid. I feel I like... You know, I you know you wonder could Money Plane sneak into the wrestlers and film slice? Perhaps it feels like it should, but uh, then again, Money Plane never was intended to have. No, theatrical. yeah, they they didn't even give it like a few <laughs> days at yeah. one theater. They did not try. So no, I, I don't I don't think we can be asked about Money Plane, which is a shame because I would nail that. Uh, that you get all the questions right. What? Yeah, yeah, if you want to wager on a man doing something to what kind of reptile? <laughs> uh, I'm so, right uh, there. I'm ready. Yeah. Right there. So um, anyway, Lon, welcome to the show. Welcome backstage. Thank You're you. coming on the show here in, in, in the first time in a minute because uh, the last couple of times it's either been just before a match. Uh, we haven't brought you on as a, in a victory lap moment in, in a minute. Right. Yet. Yeah, no, right. I think I've been on a few times to talk about it's always like final exam. We're about to take on, you know, like a somebody we're trying to hype the match. But I, right, look, I yeah. thought it was a pretty triumphant win for you. It was a. I, I have to be honest with you and no shade to you at all. Drew McQueenie is one of the most yeah. knowledgeable movie people ever to live. The man is oh, the yeah. no, of it's... movie trivia. And... I I used to read, when he was still Moriarty on Ada Cool News, I used to read Drew McQueenie's stuff a very long time ago, 15 years ago or more. Uh, so yeah, I've been following his thoughts on films forever. I have a ton of respect for that guy and his ridiculous depth of knowledge, for sure. It's, he's very intimidating. So when he came back this season, I just assumed... Yeah, I just figured this would be it. Like this would be the season for some reason he would just, he'd rip through everybody. And uh, it was a surprising, not so much a surprising performance from you. It was a surprising performance from Drew. And I think I know what you're capable of. You showed up, you had a great day that day. You, yeah. you got almost everything right. It was true. But he struggled a little bit. He, he, he didn't, yeah. he didn't quite play to the level that I think uh, I expected he might. And you know, whatever, so they can ring rust. It happens. You know, that's, it's, it's, you take that much time off. It does happen. But talk to me a little bit about what was going on, going on in your head, going into that match. Yeah. I mean, Oh, well going in, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm always of the opinion that like, look, there's a few outliers where there's like people who just don't miss questions. They just like very rarely or never miss a question. And anytime you're going up against those people, it's like, likely if not very likely that they're gonna that they're gonna take it um and and you know everybody else i feel like which is almost all of us in the league it's it's uh you know it's it, it's strikes and gutters it's ups and downs it's like if you have a good day if you get questions that you know if you hit a wheel slice that you're comfortable with it's sort of all all you know in, in a day so I, I i always go in with that kind of an attitude it's like you know you you're almost always going to have to hit most of your questions. You're going to have to have a good day to beat most of these competitors because they're all very knowledgeable, but it really is just about where the chip's going to fall today. I mean, I definitely think that's true if you look at my matches and I think that's true of, you know, most Schmodak competitors. So I'm always just hoping, you know, I have a good day and I'm really competing against myself for the most part because everybody else, it's like they could probably beat me and I could probably beat them. And it's just a matter of how this match works out. Yeah. I mean, look, uh, if we're, you know, it's an incredible match. Congratulations. It's a great Thank win you. to get. Um, I, you know, I've never beaten Drew McQueenie and, and maybe I'll have to play him this year. There's obviously some friction with uh, some of the planning going into the season didn't work out. Um, but 
<laughs> your your match I heard about that with final exam your <laughs> match with final exam uh, was kind of exactly the opposite. It was it was the first time I had seen you have a, a real tough day in a while. And and as somebody yeah. who can relate, last year you talk about those days. I think in in the since since my tournament run in 2019, I think my teams and singles record combined is 11 and four. I want to say is is since the since that tournament season and. One of those losses, the only one of those losses that was really, truly just like, I, oh, no, was uh, was this match that I played with Who's the Boss? And it was horrible. We, mm-hmm. like, we got we got wrecked. Uh, yeah. And I looked and I looked terrible and I just did not have a good day. Uh, round two is embarrassing. And, you know, you kind of have to live down when those moments happen. But the truth is we're all just humans. None of us are computers. Right. So every once in a while that day happens. Talk to me about taking the energy from that crappy loss and walking that into this pretty, pretty tough matchup. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I try just because of the way that I, I, I can be a competitive person and I can, I can be, you know, like I can be a little neurotic. And so I think the way that, that I make the Schmodan work for me and don't get too caught up in it and too emotional is to kind of have a distance, no matter what good thing, bad thing. I try to treat it like a game. I try to remind myself that it's a show to entertain and it's for fun. So I try not to get too down when I have a really bad day, like I did against Shazam and not too, you know, too full of myself when I have a really good day, like I did against Drew. It's like, I'm pretty confident that I know a bunch about movies. I'm competitive with, if not all, at least most of the people in that, in the league. And I try to like, at least remember that no matter what is happening, sort of good or bad. I will say the the, the Shazam match was was it, it stung it not because it was it was round one it was where I usually do very well and it was the kinds of questions that it feels like I should be hitting that's almost more frustrating than the final score or losing especially to an amazing team I mean how can you feel bad about losing to Bibbs and Brendan Meyer they're friggin unstoppable so I really it's more like I'm it's more like I'm kicking myself because it's like oh how did I forget that you know like who was in that movie, you know, like, like you go back and beat yourself over the specific questions where it's like, I should have been able to, to pull that one. Like I'm, I'm a little upset that I mixed up Natalie Portman and Mila Kunis, you know, like that's right, the, the classic benefits, no dopey rom-com mistake that people make because Ashton Kutcher's in one and Mila Kunis is in the other. And it's just like, if I had taken that extra beat to think about it, I might've been able to get that one. So like, that's frustrating when you feel like, Oh, I could have gotten something that I didn't. Yeah, that's a fair point. That's a fair point. And and again, I mean, we talk about this, you know, this matchup. It was the same team. You know, we both we both got knocked off by the yeah. same. Uh, and they're they're crazy. I mean, they're they know everything in the spread. I mean, that's what's intimidating about a team like Shazam is you know, they, between the two of them, it's like, well, there's nothing you're going to get by them. It's such a narrow range of movie trivia that the, neither of them is going to know. So working with swag to prepare for a match like this against a guy like McQueenie, uh, are you, you, I've heard a lot about there sort of being this big team effort within swag and everybody kind of works together and it's very, very communal. Um, is that an experience that you reflect? Like you've definitely been in on that and then you, they prepared you for this match. Yeah. Uh, swag's an extremely communicative, uh, team. Uh, you know, it, it does come to very quickly feel like a group of friends as opposed to a faction. And this is the second season where I feel like we've been able to, replicate that vibe which is cool i know that was a concern was like well we're going to be such a different team next year are we still going to feel the same and, and it and it doesn't I, I mean i got a single out you know oyama and and chandru like having two guys like that that not only know movies and not only are super just like organized and analytical thinkers and strategic minds but know the game so well like I've been playing it longer, but they, they know it. Like they watch a lot more of it and they think about it programmatically and systematically and really break it down. And so having guys like that, that you can just go to and sort of talk through some of this stuff is incredibly helpful. And like, I'm kind of dopey about that stuff. Like <laughs> I know the trivia, but I don't remember who was good. Like even well, I've watched a lot of matches, but I don't have the recall that those guys do of like who, like, Oh, McWeenie, should I put this on the wheel or that? Like what, where are his strengths going to lie? Like, I don't have a brain for that sort of thing. And those well, guys but really, I mean, that's, really do. Yeah. And that's where you have the, the group mind and you do that kind of research and that's, yeah, you know, how, yeah. you, how you get in there and, and do it. Um, when he took romance, let me ask you something. Mm, were you yes. were you surprised at all? I was, and I feel like I had direct experience with this last season in my match against Collins, which another one that did not go 
well for me. Uh, <laughs> I spun horror in round two, and that's a that's a that's a genre that I feel pretty good about as a person. Like I'm a horror fan. I've watched a lot of those movies. When you're like, hey, I'm going to throw you some horror trivia questions, I don't get scared. I feel like, oh, okay, this plays to my strengths. But it's such a broad category, and that's what ended up kicking my butt. Was it's just like the chances of you getting a horror film that you is not top of mind that you haven't seen that recently is very good because it's so vast. And I think that's what happened to, if I had to guess, not being in his brain, that would be my guess is that when you say romance, you think of all the romantic comedies or romance movies that you know, and you're like, I have a good handle on that, but you're not thinking about the Nicholas Sparks one that's just going to like get by you that you just happen to miss, you know, like I, so I think that it's, it's a, it's a genre broadness problem as opposed to a like lack of knowledge I think yeah I mean I I think I have talked pretty openly for a long time about the fact that uh I don't like broad categories it's not my it's not my favorite uh thing to do Uh, sometimes you get saddled with one and you just you just it happens you know and I also think that with a guy like McQueenie he has shown proficiency in categories like this over the years like to a crazy degree He's right. taken comedy, he's taken horror, he's taken action adventure, he's taken 80s a ton of times, and he almost always gets 12 points. Yeah. So it's hard to look at empirical evidence and say Drew McQueenie made a mistake there. Um, but my thing that I always say, and again, this is just my opinion, but mm-hmm. I always say that like, if you show me a category that I love, like Tom Cruise, I'm very classically somebody who likes Tom Cruise a lot. If you show me Tom Cruise a category and you say, will you take Tom Cruise? And I say, yes. And then I get zero points. Well, it was on me because I didn't study Tom Cruise hard enough. I know every movie he's ever been in. They're all available to me. If I wanted to watch all of them, I could. If I wanted to study them all, I could. So it just comes down to your preparation. But if you you look at me and say, are you going to take action adventure? A lot of Tom Cruise movies and action adventure. I had a podcast for five years about action movies. I love action movies. But if you give me four questions about action movies and I get them all wrong, nothing I could have done about it. Because there's no way I can study every action movie. It's not not within me to do. And so that's where I think at least that's my theory anyway, uh, that, that's why I don't like those broad categories. I, I, think you're, I think you're totally right. And I think that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff that is subtle about it too that you don't think about. I mean, if you tell me that you know, my category is Scarlett Johansson, you're putting a natural filter on my thinking. I'm not thinking of movies that I know don't have Scarlett Johansson. I've eliminated them from my thinking. So you know, if it's much before Ghost World, it's not even it's not even a thought because I'm I narrowed my range just by the category being stuff Scarlett Johansson is in. But if you give me romance or horror, I'm starting from scratch every time. I'm like, OK, well, this could be from the 30s. It could, unless you specify, you know, the movie I'm talking about or something, I, I'm thinking about the entire range of that genre. So I think even that in, in the in terms of the mental game, when you're trying to puzzle it out. Can, can be a detriment. It's like, well, your your only clue is romance, which isn't really much of a clue at all. That's most movies. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think if he had gotten perfect on it, I wouldn't have been surprised, but the way that it worked out. Uh, right. You know, I mean, it's, it it's also, I think the consideration that I'm doing a lot of time on whether to respin is what else is up there that I might prefer. Like, are there more things up there that I prefer to X, whatever I've spun, than there are things that like scare me more than X. And like Paul Newman, that was the calculation. Like, I think I even said it during the match. Like, I know Paul Newman movies pretty well. I've seen most of them. Like, and I can recall like what HUD's about off the top of my head. Yeah, right. So like that that's enough to, in, in a normal situation, if you were like, hey, Lon, you, you know about Paul Newman movies? I'd be like, yeah, I know pretty good. But there were a lot of things on that wheel that I'm like, oh, if I spin this, I'm going to have a better time. Like I, I know that even better than Paul Newman. I feel even more confident that I'm not going to get mixed up on that one than I would be on Paul Newman. So I spin again, you know, and like I think that might have gone into Drew's mental calculus as well i'm not i'm not sure yeah i don't know i don't know what their preparation was like or the conversations they had leading into it i I definitely know you can get screwed on any category it happens it happens to all of us yeah um but so (laughs) yeah but so you know it worked out you had a you had a strong match a really strong match you know you get that win now you're kind of on your on your way um where is your heart right now as far as the season goes i mean obviously rebounding from a loss like that with final exam I'm sure is something that's on your mind. Are you feeling a little more focused on teams or a little more on singles at the moment? I mean, right now, just because there's a few things that are going to happen in terms of the schedule of the team's league before 
we're activated again. Um, I'm more focused on singles just because that's what's on the sort of horizon. But in general, I'm I'm a huge fan of being part of final exam. And I really believe in the potential of that team. If, you know, obviously if both of us have a good day and it's not a, you know, an off match or whatever. Uh, but I mean, I think as competitive as I've ever been in any league has been when Paul and I are playing at our best as final exam. Like I've never been involved in that many matches that were like very close against super elite teams. And, and so, yeah, I, I feel really good still, despite the Shazam loss, I feel good about the overall prospects for final exam. And I'm super eager to get more matches with Paul going whenever I can. Well, guys, we've got Lon for about 10 more minutes. So while we have him get in your stream labs, get in your super chats, but specifically your stream labs. Uh, and again, let's, let's support the show today, guys. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of these. Goddard, I'll start with you with the stream lab. Okay. Um, from cutter hail. So Cutter. Up, ben Lon, what a fantastic performance last Friday. One of your best you. in my opinion, but I wish you'd bring the professor back. Mm. Never heard of money plane, but everyone keeps telling me to eat <laughs> urban cowboy. So I'm biting the bullet and seeing it tonight. Eat urban cowboy. What is the reference? Is that a reference from the film? I haven't watched it. Is, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know what that is a reference. To. I'm guessing you meant watch urban cowboy, but I don't oh, know. Urban cowboy, a, a, a fine film and also not connected to money plane in a way that I can deduce. There is a cow. I was trying to figure out cause there is one of the Lawrence brothers plays a very over the top cowboy yes. character, but he's not an urban cowboy. He's just a cowboy. I watched uh, 20 minutes of money plan the other night and then I turned it off and I turned on boss level instead. Mm. And, Grillo is so yoked in that movie. Oh it my is, god! Yeah, it's it's, crazy. it's like it, it's insane. Like it's yeah. it's like walking HGH. It's like yeah. it's like a hard. It's hard he's, to even. He's that buff in real life because me and uh, Marzonia went to the premiere with Carnahan and Grillo were there. Yeah. Dude is just like he's just one big chest muscle. It's crazy. Yeah, he's like jacked, and for like a guy his his age to be like yeah. that jacked is like we're still a. I'm still adjusting to that. Like it used to be you know, guys would get a little older and that would be the end of their like hyperjacked phase. But now yeah. you just stay that way until you fall over. I don't even know. Yeah, it's 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 insane. It's an insane thing. Grillo, yeah, we, we still need Frank yeah. Grillo versus John Bernthal in a movie. Like, I, I just need wow, that for, that's, for myself. Well, that's in, almost too much. <laughs> in, uh, I believe they're in the gray together. I just don't think that they fight in the gray. But I believe they're No, both- they definitely don't. And Bernthal... Burnthal sidelined right away in the in the gray, right? He's, I think so. He's, yeah, does, he, does he survive the plane crash? No, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think Burnthal is is in the main segment of the movie. Okay, I know, I know Frank Grillo is the guy that he's like. If you don't yeah, put those no, bullfolds, Grillo's the the second. Uh, Grillo's like the co lead after Liam Neeson, basically. Mm. <laughs> Just before Liam Neeson puts a bunch of. Uh, Bottles on broken his bottles. Oh, I love, what a great, yes. what a great movie! I was just on your your next guest, JTE, and I. Uh, or no, not JTE. It was a Billy's podcast, but JTE yeah. talking to me about it. He's yeah. also a fan. Uh, the Gray oh, is on, oh, dude, I think it's Carnahan's best movie, and then followed yeah. by A Team. It is uh, Gabriel Leroux. Lon, it's been a long time since you screened my Skype calls on a weekly basis on SJ mm, Plus. Gabriel wow. Quebec, here always rooting for you in the movie trivia showdown. Thanks, Gabriel. Thanks. That's a long time ago already. When I right? used to screen calls for SVU. I mean, you're talking to someone that you also <laughs> screen calls for, so I've been there. I'm taking it back. All right. Christopher Engel, five point question for Lon and Ben in movie release dates. Oh man. Three movies were oh, released no. in 1992 that were the third films in each of their respective franchises. Name two of them. Jeez, on the spot, huh? Uh, I know the first I'll give you one, one for repeat. Sh- 92 would one of no i might one of them is a hundred the first one is lethal weapon three that's 100 percent. one of them alien three five yes that's the other one yep there you go answer done alien three and lethal weapon three that's nice. correct done. yeah i wonder what the third one is um there isn't a predator three mm. it's not home alone it's not, not back the is it, uh, is it the future turtles no nope, it's it, 90 um, is uh, it clear and present danger that's not a third in a franchise. Well, I mean, it's the third sort of. Jack Ryan movie, but I sort of think of no, for Red October here and then Patriot yeah. Games. And, and Clear and Present is 90. It's 94 also. Gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. What is the third? What is the, the other one? I'm pretty yeah, sure Alien, Alien 3 and Lethal Weapon 3 both sound correct to me. That No, I mean, I, I can guarantee that's 100%. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm positive that is. Um, uh, yeah, impressive. Well, that, there you go. A five point question of the team of Lon Harris Nailed and Ben Bateman. <laughs> oh, win the Tacos, match. oh yeah. Tacos excited for you too. 
Tacos, yeah, big big Alien Three fan. <laughs> I'm surprised at that. <laughs> impressive, impressive. Uh, and that is um, all we have for right now. Okay, guys, get in any any streamlabs that we have for for the professor uh, slash the delinquent while we have him here. Uh, it would be much appreciated yeah. if you support the show. I stopped doing the professor because I literally was running out of like references. Like I felt like I'd used all my best esoteric film references, and it was like I don't know where to go from here. Let's new character. Yeah, no, I think uh, I it's think reboot. You, it. you you made a good decision. You made yeah. a good decision. It's enjoy. It's a lot it. easier. It's a lot easier. Enjoy what you do here. Yeah. Um, well, Engel cool, says in super chat, Hellraiser three is. Oh, oh. Okay. okay. Thank you, Engel. We appreciate Thank the super you. chat, my friend. Good to good to see you in here, uh, Engel. Uh, trivia mind, hell of a trivia mind. Yeah. Guess. No, I, I'm I'm familiar with Engel. Yeah. <laughs> uh well excellent man uh, i think i think if we are out of Streamlabs and super chats i appreciate you coming on the show i'm gonna let you go and take a quick break before we get uh jte on the Jute, show yeah but uh you know best of luck this season man it was a hell of a win Thank i gotta you. say there's there's you mentioned a group of guys that you expect will never miss a question and i share that sentiment uh you know i do my best but i certainly feel like when i go up against those guys it's a it's a coin toss because if they get the, if, if it's the right day for them it's just the right day for them he is one of those guys so yeah, not I, just I guys, don't... a few gals, a few gals in that in that crew. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean well, to apply pe- just dudes, pe- but people, yeah, the, people, there's yeah. a. I feel like there's a there's a there's a thin little like layer at the top, like the cream people who I'm like terrified of, who never miss a question, and then there's like all of the rest of us. And I'm not gonna say who's in what group, but that's how I sort of see the the schmo down. There's like the two percent, and then there's the ninety eight. I'm oh, in I the ninety eight. I don't view it as uh, the people you're talking about who never miss a question as. The, like I think that the most knowledgeable people aren't the people that are, that fit that bill necessarily oh, because totally, the most knowledgeable people aren't the ones that win all the matches. It's not. It's it's it is right. It, it is about who like nailing every question as opposed to the broadest film knowledge. I don't necessarily think the Shimoda always rewards the broadest film knowledge. I think it rewards specific kinds of film knowledge, not to knock the people who have that specific kind of film knowledge. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you saying that. Uh, I'll just we'll just we'll just move on from that conversation. Uh, Lon, thank you for coming on the show today. It was much appreciated, guys. Thank you for your support, for your streamlabs, for your super chats. We'll bring on the delinquent uh, the next time something awesome happens. And I wish you the best be here. In, in teams and in singles, my friend. All right, yeah, thanks for having me. All right, it was fun. All right, see you, Lon. All right, guys. Lon Harris uh, beating the great Drew McQueenie. So we'll see what happens next in the Lon Harris singles canon. Uh, who knows? There's there's definitely some there's definitely some big people on the horizon uh, that you know ha- are are on good win streaks. So we can kind of see what goes on there. But uh, for now, in just a few minutes, we are going to be bringing on our next guest, and our next guest, of course, is going to be the great JTE, uh, half of Rushmore. He's a former teams champion. Uh, you know, one of the, one of the legends of the movie trivia showdown. If we're just being completely honest. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for JTE, guys, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button um maybe we can just lead into this match for a second uh with 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 the great ben goddard as we wait for his soon to be opponent uh, goddard how are you feeling man about uh your singles debut this year i'm feeling good i mean it's it's so strange because you know last year it was just kind of one of those oh uh, whatever i know i know like and once i entered entered geekdom then you know, i really started buckling down but you know with that huge delay in the middle of the year like we just didn't know when we were coming back or what that was going to be and i wasn't really like the den at that time wasn't really like this tight-knit faction where we had study sessions like we are this year so it's a it's a whole different feel and i i feel as ready as i've ever been to take on like quite an accomplished uh competitor as jte like Mara is living proof that ring rust most likely isn't a thing, especially when we're on zoom. It's one thing, you know, when you got Andrew guys screaming at you on top of a table, two feet in front of your face, but if we're on a zoom call, then, you know, it makes it a lot easier. So uh, R- Mara just won a five round match against the first inner geekdom uh, competitor to defend the belt since Jason Inman. So ring rust is, is it's not really what I'm looking for. And I know I'm going to have to answer my five to, to win this match, regardless of what it comes down to. So I'm excited to get in there. Yeah, I think the ring rust conversation is a really interesting one, just because, you know, when you compare this to sport, there is there is a really valid comparison in a lot of areas. There's a lot of areas where it does actually feel like you can you can say like the correlation of, you know, focus or, or sort of mental fortitude or things like that 
But the physical component versus the mental component is where you really get the major difference. And I think the only thing there is ring rust, I think is exemplified in, in people's just like habits. They, they haven't built good habits for a long time. So it makes me wonder, like if McQueenie had played a lot, do you think McQueenie takes romance or the fact that he hasn't played in such a long time, he's more willing to just roll the dice. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's the thing is that is, I, you know, I don't know what's going on in the usual suspects uh, camp at all. I'm not going to try to assume, but I know what's going on in the Finstock exchange with barbarian re- leading that faction. And, and you know, probably better than I do with, he is drilling people daily, probably uh, mock matches, category wheel slices, specified study sessions. The guy has done his homework and is making his manager look way better than he deserves. Um, and like if if uh, Gucci wins manager of the year, he better bring Craig up on stage with him because that guy is so dedicated to this game. And he is he's the reason why Finstock Exchange one, their rookies are doing so well right now. And that's why I'm not worried about like I'm not underestimating JTE because he's going to have Craig in his ear um, being like, nope, uh, the game has changed. You got to study. We're going to be doing this, this, this and this. And we're going to be ready for him. The real question is, are we going to see any of the legendary JT mispronunciations? Uh, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since we've seen him in the Schmodown. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's one of the it's one of the most memorable pieces. But you know what? Speak of the devil, Goddard. Um, I'm going to I'm going to let him, you know, silently heal you out of here. Uh, and, and just I just listen. Well, look at this. He's straightening a tie. He's not even wearing one. And uh, we're going to we're, <laughs> we're going to hear what this guy has to say about the match coming up this Friday. Goddard, thanks for thanks for chatting. No problem. Unmute yourself, JTE. Yeah, good move. Strong move. JTE, you are muted still. Now you are not. Welcome to the show. Uh, is this the first time we've ever had you on Schmodown backstage? <laughs> I believe so. Yeah, this is it, man. This is the debut. So I don't know if I've been on camera with you. Maybe I, this could be. This could be wrong. But I've never played against you in the Schmodown uh, no. in singles. No, I've never played, played against you in teams. Mm-hmm. so the first the last time i was on camera with you i believe was in 2015 we were doing a review wow. of rambo first blood part two it was yes, on the okay. popcorn talk network it was you and gucci and me and andrew yep. guy um there was a lot less pounds on that table probably than there are today um <laughs> true and uh that video i think has like three million views now do you know that no holy crap <laughs> the videos- well i mean look stallone brings in the numbers there's no doubt about it he really does, man. He really does. And and I remember we, uh, the conversations like the ones we were having about that movie, I remember they're the kind of things that I think inform you as a trivia player. Because like, mm-hmm. I remember we all talked about box office and First Blood Part 2 is the same Huge. year as as Rocky IV. They're, they yeah. both came out in 85 and they're like two of the three highest grossing films domestically of the year that year. Can you imagine being a movie star where you, yeah. you star in two of the three and you directed one of them? It doesn't happen very often. I mean, I think people forget how huge Stallone was. He was the biggest star in the world uh, for a few years there. And yeah, Rocky IV and <laughs> Rambo II, which are just the most excess 80s movies like ever. Uh, I, I love those films. Uh, and I, I think we argued on that episode. I was like, does it belong in like a, the movie Hall of Fame? And I made the argument it does because the one man army, I think, was created with this movie. I think, you know, Dirty Harry was a really badass cop, you know, missing in action. Even Arnold Commando was obviously a ripoff of Rambo. This movie was the one person could go back and win the Vietnam War for us, basically. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and that's that is the lens through which you decided to become a movie enthusiast is watching <laughs> those films. And here you are today, one of the most decorated champions in the history of the movie trivia Shimoda. And I have disparaged your legacy on the show multiple times. I want you to know. Really? Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah. No, I have look. I, 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 I no, no shade as God would like to make fun of me for. Um, no, I look. I, I haven't actually disparaged the legacy. Your legacy is incredible. The wins with the Patriots. That's an all time run. It's one of the. It's one of the greatest mm-hmm. performance runs we've ever seen in the history of the league. You can't. You can't mm-hmm. take anything away from it. Um, but it's a new era. We're in a different time now. It's that was that was from a long time ago. And you've watched Jeff Snyder go out there and and get all this acclaim as this great teams player. Talk to me about how that feels. You watch this guy win Player of the Year. He wins belts with a new yeah. team twice i mean how's that feel i mean listen i i'm a fan of jeff i'm you know we're friends we were on the greatest team ever so i like seeing him go out there and get those wins uh but you know for me it was kind of like oh 
people kind of started doubting that I could do it. And I was just a little bit like, well, why, why can Jeff go out and do these things? But you guys don't think I could do it. Like I, it doesn't make any sense to me. We were a 50, 50 team. We played great together. Of course he has some strengths and I have some weaknesses that are different from each other. But for me, I, I don't know. I felt like a little bit while I stepped away from the game that it was like, Oh, look at what maybe Jeff is the reason why they did all this. No, we were 50, 50 partners. <laughs> if I was doing a solo career, just like he was during that time, I would have just, I would have been just as successful. I mean, I played Jeff before and I beat him. So, I mean, like, it goes to sh- – I beat Drew McGuini. I beat Bibiani. I beat some of the best players in this yeah. league. Uh, and yet, my name doesn't really get thrown out there sometimes. Again, you know, out of sight, out of mind, I guess that's what I kind of put it up to. So, that's why I'm kind of back to show you guys and remind some of you, hey, you know, the game has changed. The game has not changed that much. The, comp- the competition is, you know, a little bit stronger – more across the board i'll give you that a but little bit stronger across a the little board. bit stronger but let me tell you this uh greg you know was on this show a few times greg the barbarian my teammate and i agree with him i think the questions were a little bit harder back then because you were getting you knew you were getting people like me and bibiani and you know jeff snyder you were making the questions a little bit harder i do feel like the questions are a little bit easier now today than they were when i played yeah what did you say the barbarian's name is Greg the Barbarian. Craig. Greg the Bar- Everyone <laughs> says I say Greg. Greg, Craig. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it's the same thing. All right. Look, I, I'm very familiar with Greg the Barbarian. I, he's somebody that I have I've worked with a lot. Um, I spent mm-hmm. an entire season under the training regimen of the Barbarian. Oh, that's right. And uh, he, I, I'm not going to take a single thing away from him. He isn't one of the most unbelievable trainers you'll ever work with. Um, the guy is so committed. And he's doing an incredible job as the captain of your faction. I mean, he really is. He really is calling the shots and making sure that it happens. And I think, and you I think don't it's impressive. Know a thing you're talking about. This is what you do. You come out and you just say, Hey, this is what I think. So that's what it is. We've captain. Our, you know who the captain is. It is outlaw. It is <laughs> <It's Greg the laughs> Barbarian. one of the greatest to ever play the game. John Roca. Listen, every one of us, the veterans, especially, we all have our roles in helping each other and helping these rookies out. So we all, work as a team maybe that's something you guys didn't quite do last season uh it sounds like to me i've heard the stories it was kind of like every man from himself a little bit of too much ego here and there this team that we have now works as a team and it's working out beautifully if you look at all these uh w's we're putting on people you guys have an impressive stable of rookies i'm not gonna lie to you you mm-hmm. all your rookies are coming out they're delivering and if they keep winning against real players as opposed to other rookies, I'll be really impressed. But it doesn't change the fact that you guys are getting points. And it's, oh, yeah. it, was a, it, was a, it was a strategy, obviously put together by Craig the Barbarian, um, that I think was very impressive. Let me and, tell you, if Vince Stock doesn't win manager of the year this year, just throw the award out. Don't even continue it anymore. Because the fact that he has put this team together and is getting this many wins, do not even think about giving it to – kaiser because kaiser has literally he's basically got the first round pick all the all these players just went to him because they're like he's not managing he's just sitting back and collecting victories but he's actually not putting any work whereas finstock in the dossier that my friend is worth an award by itself let me ask you something so uh who's the greatest player of all time i mean i think you gotta but, uh, you know, again, speaking of uh, Team Rushmore, you got to look at the <laughs> some of the best players that started have longevity and have won a lot of matches. I would put John Roke up there. Obviously, you're going to put Dan Merle up there. Jeff Snyder, me. Uh, come off the top of the head, those four, I would say, are definitely in the top. So don't you feel like, in your opinion, then, when you say that he's just sitting back with great players, Vince got to keep Roka so that he gets to kind of sit. And if you're just as good as you say – I mean, that would mean that it, unless you're saying I'm better than you, which I can't imagine you would say that. So then it Listen, sounds to me like the top two guys on the faction that that, that Gucci's getting to just, you know, be a strategist no, are actually guys that no. you think are better players anyway. So wouldn't, wouldn't the award then go to Kaiser for working no, with lesser talent like me and Dan? Because of the rookies that we got, the rookies will, the guys that we have in our stable will go on to be the future of the Schmodown. They will look at this draft as like the next great, players of the Schmodown came from the Finstock exchange. That's the problem with our faction. There's so many great players that we all have to share and try to work together. Uh, you know, when it comes down to these tournaments, I wish we could put more people in these tournaments because we literally have players that could go ahead and win the whole thing. Impressive. Hey, look, it's impressive. And I'm glad that mm-hmm. I'm glad that your captains instilled so much confidence in you. Um, yes, so 
Yeah, right. You said John Rocco's the captain? Yes. Does he know that? Of course he knows it. Okay. There's Excellent. nothing John Rocco doesn't know, including yeah. movie trivia. Yeah, he's 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 a legend. Um, no, he is. I, I can't. What what am I going to do? Disparage one of the one of the twelve best players that's ever played the game? I'm kidding. I'm not. Of course, I'm not going to disparage. He, he is one of the top two. There are two people. They, right. I'm, I'm not going to lie about that. John Rocco is one of the two. Um, so you got a lot of things coming up, though. You know, you're you're in a team's yeah. tournament, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, JT, and I want to hear your mm-hmm. opinion about this because off the record. Uh, you know, off the record, we, we had a conversation that I don't know has even been necessarily revealed, but you and I spoke on the phone four or five months ago uh, in, in the free agency period when everybody was talking about where everyone was going. And there was a real conversation about the possibility. You told me you were coming back and you were interested in playing with somebody who you knew could win. And I appreciated the phone call. Obviously, you, you know, you guys won nine in a row. So it's uh, mm-hmm. that is a crazy, crazy accomplishment. Um but you end up on the exchange with, you know, uh, John Roca and Craig the Barbarian. And it's not, uh, it's not Greg and Roca, it's you and Roca. What, where did that happen? Like, I think everybody just expected when Dan and I left, it was going to end up being Roca and Greg. What did- well, again, I called you and I called a lot of people because I was making it known that when I come back, I want to go for the belts and I want to play with a veteran. I didn't want to play with a rookie. I wanted to, take another shot at the belts and show people that, you know, it wasn't just Jeff and that I could be with a strong player and be a strong enough player to carry that team to another belt. So for me, you know, when you say, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, I just feel like I have a good shot with anybody who could team up with me and kind of fill some of the blanks that I have. Listen, Westerns is not my strongest category. That's not a big secret. Roca could totally, counterbalance me in that area and craig do i guess he he does not have the resume that i have or roca he is still one year into the league uh he's a very strong player one of the most you know prepared players that you'll ever meet every time this guy comes to match he has done his homework and for me that's new this year i've never studied for the showdown before this year all those years I played with Jeff and I played all those years when the league first started, I just went off my pure knowledge of what I've done my whole life, which is watch movies. So when it came to, you know, coming up with a team, me and Roca have been through every kind of situation you could put over time, live shows. I mean, you name it, we've done it. So to put the two veterans who have been doing it for the longest on the same team just made the most sense. That's fair. I assumed. And, and I, you know, when, when the, you guys were pitching me really hard, you know, Craig and, and uh, Roca said to me, if you, if you come back, you pick your teammate. That was the deal, you know? And I imagine they probably said a similar thing to you, right? You got to decide who you wanted to play with and, and legendary players, you know, with legendary accomplishments, you can't call your team Rushmore if you don't have guys that have won championships on the team. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the team's tournament that's upcoming pretty soon here. Mm-hmm. Um, your first round matchup is against, remind me again. Our first round matchup is against, oh God, who are they? What are they? What's their actual team name? I, it's hard to remember uh, some of these teams. The yeah, press the press room. press room. That's there. Yeah. Josh Horowitz is- and Perry Nemiroff. Perry Nemiroff. Okay, great. So that's, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think, well, I can't remember exactly when we're going to start seeing those teams matches, maybe in May sometime, but so, you mm-hmm. know, that's, that should be a pretty decent setup for you guys to go in there and, and do all be curious to see um, how that one plays out when we see it. You know, Perry obviously had a pretty strong, strong performance last mm-hmm. year. She beats Kalinowski in singles, you know, nice upset win there. Obviously she works in the business. And, and when you work in the business, like Perry does, you get a lot of peripheral knowledge that really helps. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Horowitz knows everybody. And the guy, like he literally just, that, that guy yeah. has interviewed and worked with like every celebrity in the world. So you guys like that, you know, they do their research. You can't host yeah. the shows the way he does if he doesn't. So are you guys uh, taking them seriously? We, we're going to take everybody seriously. I, I will not take anybody for granted in the Schmodown these days, because the second you do that is when you get upset or you lose. Uh, again, I feel like with this game, it's just about you're playing yourself just as much as you're playing your opponent. So if I go in there and take care of my business, if me and Roka take care of business, it puts the pressure on our team to take care of their business. I'm confident we're going to do that. I'm sorry. Really- what was that crane shot that just yeah, happened was- on, on screen? <laughs> <laughs> what is Did going I- on here? I was curious if I was the only one on camera. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, uh, <laughs> I've got a bad back. As a lot of you guys know, I'm having to no, go yeah. be with a surgeon tomorrow. So I, uh, I have the sitting standing desk. So 
I just Perfect. push a little button and I'm able to just adjust it. So I was hoping <laughs> okay. it was going to be a little more of an innocuous move than that, but now we're no. all, now we're all no. talking about it. So it's, it's all good. All Watching right. that diner scene from The Godfather on Zoom <laughs> right now. It's pretty good, man. Yeah, it's pretty good. Very it's David fincher I love it. Good, yeah, good camera work on the show. Anyway, so yeah, listen, I don't take anybody for granted in the show down. The competition here is always going to be tough, uh, no matter who you're playing. The second you go and think you have an easy match is the second you lose a match. Right, 100%. And, and I think the one match of yours that I remember, the one that I think was, it was the, disappoint, the most disappointing match, if I recall, was you went in to play Liz Shannon Miller. Mm-hmm. Now, this is one of those matches where I think we've seen it happen, and, and the writing team is doing such a good job this year. They're working so mm-hmm. hard to make sure that the categories and the questions are balanced. But you took Ridley Scott, I remember, and you just got wrecked. It was so brutal. Yeah. I was, and, I, and I love Ridley Scott movies. I was sitting mm-hmm. in the studio that day watching and just thinking like, wow, these are all so specific, right? It was like- So the, specific. It's like, what's the animal on the armor and uh, Gladiator? And yeah. Like, it was, I, 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 that's one of the few times, like, I'll be honest with you, you know, when I lose and win matches, you know, I, when I'm happy, when I, I lose, I don't let it get me too angry. I'm very, you know, I'm very cool when it comes to just taking losses and victories. That was one of those days where I remember thinking to myself, you know, wow, really Scott was my favorite director. So I think I've seen almost every film of his, maybe one, I haven't seen maybe two at the most. And for me to get such deep cuts and she got much easier questions, if I remember correctly. Uh, and even she, I remember Lizzie came up to me after the match was like, wow, those were really hard. Like they were super specific. And unless you watched the movie, I think the night before a lot of those questions you weren't going to get until, you know, again, is there a gladiator fan out there who probably knew that? Sure. They probably, they're a huge fan, but to someone like me who's seen all his films and has watched a lot of movies, those were very specific. So it was hard to swallow for sure. And I hate that yeah. as my last match. Yeah. Was it your last? I thought, th- I thought you played uh, against oh, Jonathan Harris. After that's that. right. Did, right? Jo- that's right. I did beat Jonathan Harris to like for a team up match, but yeah, but still that one still stings. That's the one I remember put that way. Yeah. Of course. I mean, we all hate the, I was talking to, to Lon just a minute ago about, you know, we all have the, the, the day where you have a bad match. It just happens. Oh, of course. Uh, every once oh. in a while, you know, bad, you know, just, it's just a bad rub. And that was that one for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you have to be able to, you know, shake those off and, and do your best, but look, something that you're talking about here that I think is specific. And, and I'm curious what your approach has been with this, because having worked with mm-hmm. Craig for as long as I did, I know a lot of his stuff. I know a lot of his tricks, okay. like a lot of stuff he brings to the table and he's very good. Um, mm-hmm. so when you think about the idea that if you get asked those questions about really Scott movies and you've seen all those movies you got asked about, but unless you mm-hmm. had just gotten, just watched those movies again last night, mm-hmm. you probably would miss them. And if they didn't have multiple choice, you absolutely would just miss them outright. How do you prepare for that now that the schmodown is so like, it's so refined. It's such a clear, clear idea of what they're going to be asking about. How do you, how are you studying? How are you preparing? Yeah, well, like I said, you know, I do think the questions are a little bit easier than they were when I played, uh, especially in the first round. Uh, second round, still a good mix of hard and not so hard. Uh, really what I notice, you know, kind of watching matches and getting ready to play is you have to know some of the side characters, the character names. You need to know, because a lot of times they won't give you the two leads. They'll give you like the three other actors or two other supporting actors, uh, especially in some of the five-pointers. So for me, it's just not only watching the movie and really knowing the film, but jump into IMDb, make sure you know who the side characters are, their names, their character names, who they're played by, get the year down. I'm I'm just taking a lot more to the specifics than I did before where it's like, oh, I've seen that movie. I'll remember most of it. No, now I need to get just the specific details and try to storm my memory, which is not always the easiest thing. And there's only so much you could study and cram for. Like for me, I've been studying for this my whole life because I've been watching movies my whole life. I'm a movie geek. Uh, and it's just kind of hitting that next level of, okay, you know, you've seen this movie a hundred times, but do you remember exactly what year it came out? Do you exactly what awards it was nominated for? So you just kind of have to expand. I do what I do a lot now is I watch a movie and I pull up IMDb as I'm watching it. And that way I'm kind of watching the film. I'm able to study a little bit while I'm watching it. For some reason that seems to help a lot. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's totally fair. It's the, uh, it's the same thing, same thing that I do. And I think a lot of people do now. And, and the truth is you have to be able to do that quickly. And you have to be able to do that without watching the film a lot of the time as well, because mm-hmm. there's just too many movies. There's just not nearly enough film, not nearly enough hours in the day 
to actually watch all of these movies. What's your relationship to new stuff? I mean, now, obviously, there's so many things coming out, but they're all on different platforms. It's hard to know what's going to qualify yeah. for Schmodown. How do you treat new releases? Well, in the past year or so, you know, obviously it's been much different with streaming, but I do try to watch the things that are good. I'm not going to watch every movie that comes out just because it came out. If it hasn't, sometimes, you know, a movie gets terrible reviews. I won't go in and watch it, but I'll remember who directed it. I'll try to remember who stars in it and I'll try to get the basic plot. So if it does come up in a new releases category, hopefully I'll still be able to pull it. But yeah, I'm not going to go watch every single movie made just because I'm in the showdown. Do you feel like, uh, you, you know, you've got matches in both divisions coming up here, and I want to talk to you about your singles match coming mm -hmm. up in a second, but teams is obviously something you have a great legacy, and so winning that team's belt again for you, I know would be meaningful, and mm -hmm. you'd be able to rub it in Snyder's face a little bit that you could do it too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a little bit like that Kobe moment, remember when he won, and he, he made that comment to Shaq, about Shaq what's it yeah. taste like? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sure that would be meaningful for you, but, but singles, you've never won the singles title. You had the your best run, best run ever was the 2017 tournament run. Am I correct? Yeah, well, I, I fought Riley in the very first showdown uh, for a chance to win oh, sure. the title. Yeah, which is you know again, I get it. It's early in the game. <laughs> yeah, then I fought I think Sam Levine in the tournament in order to go to get a championship match, and I, I lost that. It was a tough match. I lost that one to Sam. Uh, so yeah, I've gotten close, uh, but listen that's the way this game is played you could come close a lot of times and sometimes people don't give you the proper respect for even be that close it's so hard anytime you enter a tournament it is not easy because every win adds a little bit more pressure as you get higher and higher on the chart and the standings uh but i always feel like i played good i've won twice in overtime uh i've gone to sudden death several times and pulled out victories and you know not a lot of people can say that it's really hard to win in sudden death. There's no doubt about it. It's not something I, uh, I have not won in sudden death a lot of yeah. times. Me and Drew McQueenie, we went, I don't even know, seven, eight, six questions in the sudden death. I, the studio was just losing their mind. I was I losing my mind because I was like, this, you know, Drew's somebody I respect. I've been reading his stuff since I was in like high school, maybe. Like he's been around with any cool news for so long and I've always read his stuff. So to go toe to toe with him in sudden death like that was was special and uh i'll never forget that match was that the trisanateratops match was it no <laughs> that was that was way earlier but yeah drew mcguini it came down to apollo 13 like who got sick and who replaced gary sinise he wrote bill paxton i wrote kevin bacon i just happened to know that and i was shocked that he got it wrong but yeah it could happen it could happen to shimoda <laughs> That's, it happens all the time. Yeah. Well, so yeah. that was, you know, that was a long time ago. So you, mm -hmm. you, you obviously, you know, you play the next season, um, 2018, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable year. And then the, sh the league starts to kind of shift. I know you took some time off. Um, mm -hmm. and, and now here you are, you're back. So your last couple of matches against Liz and Jonathan Harris, but you've got this match coming up Friday against mm -hmm. Ben Goddard. Goddard's <laughs> yeah. young. He's hungry. He's listening mm -hmm. to us. Um, mm -hmm. talk all the smack you want. And by, by the way, guys, uh, while we're getting, while, while we're talking to JT, we have JT for about another half hour, get in your, your, your super chats and specifically get in your stream labs. The Shimo bot is on again, guys, your support for the show means so, so, so much. Um, it really, really is important. I wish we had some sort of a, a trivia match that I could, I could run the end of this as a goal, <laughs> but unfortunately we don't have one today. Um, but so please guys just get in your support questions, comments, what have you, what are you looking forward to? Are you looking forward to the free for all? What do you think is going to happen Friday? But um, you're playing against, you know, Ben Goddard, who's, who's a player who's there's a spotlight on Ben Goddard. He's, he's somebody who's very, very much involved in the SCN world. He's on this show with me every single week. Um, you know, and he's somebody last year who was the anchor of his faction for the first part of the year. Very, very clearly, very bright star. Um, Scottard's first match in singles this year, and I think he's a player that a lot of people in this league expect to beat you. I don't, I don't mean to, really? I don't mean to say it in a way that's. Look, you haven't played I, in a I singles, yeah, in, in four it. years almost, yeah. in, in a convincing I, singles fashion. So I I'm understand. just saying, what does that feel like to know that that's the case? <laughs> <laughs> it just feels like they're, you know, out of sight, out of mind. It's he's the new rookie on the block. Oh, he's so impressive. There's not a lot of game tape on Ben. I went back and I did a scroll down search. He's done some IG tournaments. He's done some tag teams with Rachel. And I'm just like, okay, he hasn't really had as much game time as obviously me. So I feel like he hasn't completely proved himself in the scroll down. So it's a little shocking that people are picking him over me, but you know what? Again, new toy, new rookie. He's exciting. Uh, he's got a great head of hair. <laughs> I get it. Uh, but you know what? 
he's going to have to prove himself. And this is a great way to do it. Anytime I feel like Christian had a new great player that was up and coming when Drew entered the league, the beast, uh, these guys would come in and be like, this is the next great player. And they would play me and they would lose. So it should, actually should be an honor for Ben to be placed against me because it's saying that Christian thinks he could be a great player because he's going to test him against me. Goddard, how does it feel for you to hear a guy qualifying all his accomplishments in singles from something from four years ago? He's I mean, he's qualifying 2017 tournament results as, as the Michael reason Jordan's he thinks the greatest of all you. time. Is it not because he played in the 90s? What does that if mean? He, if he was talking smack on the Wizards, it wasn't working, man. That's the that's what you're doing right now. Well, and that's the thing is I'm that, not that I, old. It's not, it's not JTE's fault of, of when he played or when he was relevant in the league. Um, but to me, it's, it's not Michael Jordan. It's more like when the Celtics won all their titles, like, because mm-hmm. you were facing, you know, top 10 and uh, above the line, like over and over and over again. And those are great players. Like no, no disrespect to those players, but the league has changed. Like you said, you never even had to study to win those matches and you won. And that's great. Mm-hmm. But we have it has been shown that, that those days are done. And you do have Barbarian and you got Roka and you got a good faction behind you. So I know you're studying now. You've even said so yourself. So you know the league has changed. You know the league is harder now. You know the league has way, way, way more depth than it ever has before, including the rookies that are coming in, knowing the game, not like, oh, I like movies. I can play this. The no, underscore those, those K days underscore are done. Wolf donated $20. Hello, gentlemen. It's always great to see a legend like JTE on the show. I personally pulling for Goddard to win just so I can get a battle of the bends so the boss can crush the bandit. Hashtag mm. Team Bateman for life. Let's get that going at the end of the show. Uh, ben, we'll, we'll play some Star Wars trivia at the end of the show. Who, today. Put, uh, who put that one in there, Goddard? That was your boy, Kyle. Oh, Kyle Coppin, call sign the gray. One of the legends, one of the greatest of all time. Big salute to you, Kyle. Uh, yeah, you want to do some Star Wars trivia, Goddard? Talk to me in 60 oh. days. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Keep pushing. Uh, you keep pushing back that start date. So, you know, who wins a 60 day start there? Brother? Hey, man, look, I got it. I got to have a reason to do it. I have to have a real strong motivation, 60 days, you know, and also time in my life to yeah, spend true. 60 days yeah. doing nothing but Star Wars <laughs> trivia. That doesn't sound uh, it doesn't actually sound appealing at all. Um, all right. Well, look, I'm excited to see how things go on Friday with the two of you guys. It sounds like uh, you're, you're both taking each other fairly seriously. It sounds I think people are excited to see what you both do. Unfortunately, only one person can win. Only, unfortunately, one of you mm-hmm. is going to have to go the other direction on this one and is, is going to pull themselves up from their bootstraps. But here's the good news. No matter what happens on Friday, I believe you are both such focal points of your factions. You'll both have a shot in the singles tournament no matter what happens over the next couple matches. That's an exciting tournament. There's a lot of tournament season stuff coming up soon here. You're obviously mm-hmm. both in different different teams uh, on the same side of the bracket. You're on the same side of the bracket in the team's tournament, I think. That's what I'm like, no, yeah, you definitely are. You guys are on the same side of the bracket in the team's tournament. So there's another yep. matchup potentially there. There's mm-hmm. going to be a singles tournament. Uh, there's going to be an IG tournament. Goddard, are you playing IG at that level this year? Are you going to be doing a tournament? Are you sure? I'm going to, uh, it depends. Like if it's a two person, you know, two, like a 16 person tournament, yeah. I will be, but Saul is our main IG player. So if it's only eight, Saul is going 24 uh, seven studying this stuff. And you saw him in his, in his debut match, knocking oh, out gosh. John Humphreys. So there's no way we're not putting in Saul. If it's a one, if it's a single person tourney, like that is our, he is our bread and butter for IG. But if it's 16, I'm happy to step up for sure. Uh, JTE question for mm-hmm. you. John Roca is the a priority for singles on your faction. Am I correct about this? He's the guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Who's number two, you or Greg? Um, I think we were probably on the same level. We're just going to put our players out there with the best chance to win. And we're going to try to get W's let Christian worry about where that places us in rankings and all that. We're just going to go out there, land some TKOs, get some wins and we'll just go wherever you know the chess pieces lay. No, no, I mean, I understand that. I'm not saying anything about who's better. That's not a question I'm asking. I'm saying if Christian asks you guys, hey, Roka's already in his own bracket. I mean, look, he's going to, he needs to get beaten by me soon. That's going to happen. So if there was a singles tournament happening soon, mm-hmm. John and I wouldn't get to be in that singles tournament. We'd be on our own, you know, collision yeah. course. But he said there's an eight person tournament. Who's going to be in it? Is it Barbarian Greg or is it JTE? Well, who is it? Well, you'd have to ask our manager. Uh, that's not my decision. Of course, every player, if you ask any player in our team if they want to play in a tournament, they were, it's going to be absolutely yes, 100%. We all want to play. Uh, we are not able to make those decisions. We're not going to demand them either. 
we will talk to our manager. We'll talk to it as a team and we'll decide who's going to go. In. You've got a, if, if, if he says Greg's going to go instead of me, I will bow down and say, Greg, go get us a W. And I would be confident he would. You really Greg are calling your, your team, your teammate, Greg. That's amazing. <laughs> You've got Greg, Greg Gagner in the chat Greg. here. He says, John Roca is the greatest of all time. Um, so, you know, he's a supporter. He's a supporter yeah. of the appointed captain of the team. Um, but look, so uh, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting to see no matter what happens. Mm-hmm. There's a long season. There's a lot of matches ahead of us. Uh, nobody knows who's going to be in the free for all this Saturday. People don't know if you'll be there. They don't know if Greg will be there. Uh, Roca, anybody, only four people so far have been announced for that free for all in uh, myself, Adam Collins, William Bibiani, and Dan Merle, everybody else is a, is a total question mark. So we shall see how things go on Saturday. Guys, if you're interested in the free-for-all, this is one of the most exciting events of the entire season. Everybody loves the free-for-all. It's my favorite. Did you, play, did you play in the first one? Did you play in the, yeah. the one at Collider? Yes. Or the first of the two at Collider, I guess it was? I believe I played in all but one, I believe. I'll have to go back and look. I've been doing this for so long, Ben. It's hard to keep track. I remember the one year, the first, the John, the, when John Humphrey won the MVP, mm-hmm. I think you were in that one. I think I was there for that, but I wasn't in it. It was 2017. It was, I had just joined the league, but I had only been in mm-hmm. for like three weeks. I think that was the first one. Then the second one so. was the second one was the one where Brianne won it at the end. Um, you might, that might've been the one you missed. That was 2018. 2019 was the one at the globe. I know you were in that one. I think you and I were on the table towards the end at that one. Mm-hmm. Um, or no, maybe not. I think I'd gotten eliminated at that point. I was in overtime with Dan and Bibiani. Oh yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's right. the last one I was in. Yeah. That was the that 19 was... one. It's a great event. It's a that great a event. One. Yeah. You played really well. And, and uh, it's, it's one of, it's one of the most popular events of the whole year. So if you guys are excited, if you don't know what it is, yeah. I mean, it's I imagine a Royal Rumble, do. baby, it's a Royal Rumble. <laughs> you get to see all your favorite players in one spot and anything can happen. That's what makes it so exciting. And everybody is given a fair chance to win. And you just got to answer the questions. And that's why I think yeah. everybody loves it. Yeah, it's a great event. 40 competitors, five from every faction. That's going to be this Saturday. Pay-per-view, 12 p.m. Get your tickets now. Go to the schmodownlive.com. You can just buy your pay-per-view pass or go to patreon.com slash schmodown. Become a patron today. And if you become a patron today, you guys get access to all the pay-per-views, including the free-for-all, which is going to be like a four or five hour event. It's a long event. Um, I'm just disappointed we're not going to all get to see each other and actually hang out. That's the that's the one, yeah. the one bummer of the digital free-for-all. Speaking of digital... This is something you haven't done before. Your your yeah. first match coming up on Friday is a digital game, and you're somebody who is, I feel like, classically fed off the crowd. You could, I could be wrong about this, mm-hmm. but I feel like you love the performance aspect. Yeah, this, this is one thing a lot of people keep saying. The game has changed. It's easier. I think the digital age makes this easier to not be in front of the camera, not in front of the audience, not having the lights bearing down on you. I was used to it. Like it, it wasn't a, it didn't affect me at all when I used to do my matches back in the day. But I know people I've sat in that studio and I've seen co- players come off the table who I know, know are strong players. And I've said, once I got up on that table under the lights and the camera, the live aspect, they folded. And to, for people to be comfort in their house, in their computer chair, who knows what, you know, they could be eating a sandwich 10 minutes before they're doing the show to be able to just be relaxed in your home and come on here and play the digital way. I think it's an easier way to play this game and it just makes it easier for me, honestly, to not have to get up, drive to the studio, wait for everybody ushering you by film your promos. There's just, it makes it easier. So I think again, the questions are a little bit easier and I think just the actual pressure of the game is easier when you're doing it digital. So to me, (laughs) I just don't understand people like, Oh, this game has changed. He's not gonna be able to do it. Every single round is the same as when I played. Nothing has changed as far as the game. Well, look, I mean, you can say all this it's now, all but you're still going to have to see how it feels when you actually play is the truth. I mean, that's you're going to have yeah. to see how it acts. I know in theory, you feel like it's the same thing as doing this. Yeah, uh, but I've but, done enough Zoom calls in the last year, enough stream yards to be completely comfortable in this aspect. You feel like you could, you're going to perform well on Friday, no matter what, like you're just good with digital trivia. You, There's you no under out- clock you took out any distractions that I could have in a live show. And then now it's just me and my computer answering movie questions. It's going to, I think it's going to be easier. I really do. You think that right now, if I gave you a 10, a 10 question off the cuff quiz of like I, round, like round one difficulty with sure. 15 seconds, no repeats, you'd go, how many do you think you'd get? Just Honestly. for fun. I, I mean, I think a majority of them, let's say 80 to 90%. <laughs> Go ahead. Throw me Not, some questions. I'll do my eight best. to nine. No, we, I, I can't, this is the, 
guys, we've got, we've got JT for just shy of 20 more minutes. And mm-hmm. I know we haven't had a goal yet today, but if I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to give you any repeats. You're going right. to have to just answer in 15 seconds. That's mm-hmm. all you get. I would make up yeah. the questions on the spot. Uh, I love it. I love speed round. Can... I love sudden death. Bring it on. <laughs> he loves answering trivia questions, guys. It's 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 one forty four. If we can get, let's see here. It's one forty four. We need, we need to set a goal, and it's, we can't make it outrageous. We don't have it very long. Mm-hmm. In the next ten minutes, in the next ten minutes, if we can get seventy five dollars in donations, let's we have to call it an even hundred. Hundred dollars yeah. in the next ten minutes. If we can get one hundred dollars in donations in the next ten minutes. I'm going to give JTE a ten question quiz. 15 seconds, no repeats. And he's saying minimum, he's going to get eight of these 10 correct. That's what he's yeah. saying. I think 80 to 90. Can I, ask, a- can I ask you yeah. a question about your so-called free agent signing? Did you yeah. just put a bunch of names on a dartboard, close your eyes and throw a dart and like, oh, let's see who it landed on. Oh, Kaser. Okay, let's go with Kaser. Because I feel like Kaser didn't sell you. He brought nothing to the table. You literally just went somewhere because, oh, if I go here, I could basically do whatever I want. And obviously you probably talked to Dan. We're like, you want to go here? Sure. Maybe that was it. But I feel like there was nothing that brought you to that specific faction. You were just, it could have been anybody. You were like, I'll go wherever I feel like I want. The truth what is. sold you about Kaiser? Well, his name is Kaiser. But it's what Kaiser. sold me about Kaiser is that, see, while, while both Kaiser and Gucci kind of play up the whole like, uh, you know, I'm idiot mm-hmm. savant, kind of like, uh, you know, the, the town fool. That's kind of their vibe, but they're supposed to be like geniuses. Kaiser actually is a genius. And Gucci is exactly as advertised. Now, Gucci is, is the greatest performing manager the Schmodown's ever seen. I can't take it away from him. He's the best dressed manager of all time. He's, an, he's amazing. He offers a yes. lot of things to the Schmodown. But actual management, like proper management of how to make a player better, not his strong suit. Whereas Kaiser, it turns out, is a genius when it comes to this stuff. He actually is. And I had long conversations with many, okay. many players, with many of the managers in the off season. There was a lot of options on the table and it wasn't going to necessarily be Kaiser and Merle and, you know, taking Mara with the first pick and re-signing Robert Parker. Like these are all pieces that slowly but surely over the course of about, I'd say the final three weeks before announcement came together and they were real conversations See, I'm shocked to hear you say some of these things because Kaser, you are a player. I put you in a level where you don't need somebody like Kaser to teach you things. What Tom does, what Gucci does, is he takes great players who are already confident and great players, and he gives you that mojo. He gives you that special, that little special thing that says you can't lose, and even if you lose, you win. Uh, so to me, he is the perfect manager for a great player. And yes the rest of us will work on getting all the rookies up to date and make them great players too. But someone like you, you don't need somebody like Kaser. You are better than that. And I think that's why you would have just went wherever you felt like somebody would give you exactly what you wanted. And I don't think you really care about your manager. I think I'm Ben Bateman. I'm going to go where I can be the top dog. And I well, think that's look, what happened. I, look, I, I'm not going to, there is no, there is no Ben Bateman went to the dungeon and I'm going to be the top dog, but I'm going to recruit Dan Merle to come to the factory. I'm the top dog. That's not how this worked. That's just not how this worked. I'm forging my own path. Mm-hmm. I play on a faction as a teammate with the greatest living player in movie trivia history. There is nobody better than that guy. He's shown it time and time and time again. So when you want to talk about somebody that you play well with, that you trust, the thing about this situation that came together that was so important to, to myself, to Dan Merle, Dan and I don't need to be best friends. We don't need to be brothers. We're, we're not in this thing to hang out and, and eat nachos. We mm-hmm. both have a common goal and purpose. It's to win the team's title together. It's to mm-hmm. be on the best faction. It's to win the faction title. That's it. it all, all decisions about ego and who is going to do this. Has Dan ever held the title in teams? He has. Yeah, he, he held how it with John Roca. He held Roca for how long? They won it, then they, they defended it, and then mm-hmm. they lost it. Okay. The one time, yeah. I held it for a year. I know it was an impressive <laughs> run. It was it was an impressive I, run. Listen, I would love. To, I can't wait to play you one day, and I can't wait to play Dan Merle one day. Those you are two of the two most. I want to play all I, like any great player. I want to play the best, and I've been asking for a match with Dan for years. It just never worked out because uh, I watch all the games, and I know we. I you could beat me, I could beat you, and I could beat Dan. He could beat me, and I just want the opportunity to get in there and do it. These days, JT, unlike in the old days where they pulled your name out of a hat to play Riley, you have to earn your opportunities. 
You got to win. That, that's exactly why I came back. And yeah. I have earned my opportunities in the past. I just always fall one question or one match short. Guys, I want to read some Streamlabs and Super Chats here. We had this offer out that if we got $100, $100 in donations by seven minutes from now, I'm going to be giving JTE a 10-question pop quiz with 15 seconds per question. That's it. He, he gets no repeats, and he's guaranteeing he's going to get at least 80% of them right. And I won't just throw Kevin him donated impossible $50. questions. Ask and you shall receive Ben. Let me know if you need questions too. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> Is that a... Was it that was there was that Kelly or was that that was who, Kelly who? W with a fifty dollar donation? All right, Kelly. Kelly's Kelly's the best. Kelly, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Kelly, thank you. You sent me a wonderful message uh, yesterday on Twitter, and uh, I did read it. I'm going to respond. The to underscore K you know. underscore Wolf donated fifty dollars. There you go. Was there ever any go. doubt, boss? Do you know I got you. Boom! Double salute. I mean. Uh, Kyle Coppin's the best, and, and it's, it's such a good group mm -hmm. of people that watch this show. Guys, do me a favor really quickly. There's uh, 100 of you watching this video that have not yet hit the thumbs up button on the video. Uh, please do. Please hit the thumbs up button. I'm going to pull up. Uh, let's see here if I've got an old document of questions here that I can use. And if not, I'm going to have to just come up with these off the top of my head. Bring um, it, baby. Action Army all day. You, yeah, you're <laughs> give me action movies. <laughs> I'll take them all day. Wait, what's the – I was uh, in the restroom. What is the, the deal? So he um, claimed, yeah, he ahead. said that digital is just as easy. He said digital is just as easy as easier. Uh, easier. easier. He said he thought it, he thought it more relaxing. And I said, you've never played before. And he said, if I gave him 10 questions, no repeats, 15 seconds per question, he'd mm -hmm. get at least eight of them correct on the spot. So easier. I threw out the challenge to see if, uh, so, so I'm going to read these questions here. Cause I got a, I got a list in front of me here. Let's hear it. Um, and, uh, so Goddard, can you keep track Pay of time? Pay attention, for me? Goddard. Pay attention. You're about to see this. I'm going this with the guy. heat. If I can answer them faster than he can, you want me to shout it out? <laughs> no, you guys, you guys have got a match coming up. You we guys got have got a match, match coming up. Let's go. Um, yeah, let's I'll, I'll, I'll do time. Okay, and uh, but what I yeah, so and when it gets to 15, just say next, and if he doesn't give us an answer, it's over. He misses the question. Um. All right, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start you off. Wow, these are some hard questions. Oh, I like wow. it. Okay. Make them hard, <laughs> huh? Jesus. Go ahead. Um, these are all release dates. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, and I guess I guess uh, the 15 seconds, just like this is a speed round, Goddard, we can't start the 15 until I'm done reading the question. He's got to get 15 seconds. Oh, yeah, seconds yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Thank you, like thank a normal, you. normal thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready? No, I'm gonna count no, you JT. down in yeah. and I'll yeah, we'll do this. Don't worry, guys. We'll do the super chats and uh non schmobot streamlabs before JT heads out because I know there's a there's a good handful. Yeah, okay. thanks guys. And if you want to get anything in, if you want to distract him by putting in a schmobot while he's playing, I totally encourage it. <laughs> All right. Yep, we Bring will it. not stop the timer. It'll be incredible. It'll be so good. All right, here we go. Uh question number one. Taylor Hackford directed Jamie Foxx in what Bray. biopic? Question number two. In Swiss Army Man, which actress plays Sarah Johnson that Paul Dano's character is in love with? Oh, that's a good question. Is it... God, Daniel Radcliffe and Paul Dano. Who played the female in that one? Is it... Um... Five, oh, uh... four, three, I don't two, one. one. There's one. Ramona right, Flowers. One miss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is a girl it is, Ramona it, Flowers? It is Ramona Flowers. It is Ramona Vera Flowers. Was Winstead. Yeah, Winstead, but Winstead. okay. Yeah, I can't give you that one. It was right under the wire. I'll give it to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, question number three. Which year saw the release of the 1990s animated The Lion King? I want to say 94. Correct. All right. He's two for one. Um, two and one. Question number four. Question number four. In the 2016 film Passengers, which actor played the android bartender Arthur? Um, that would be Michael Sheen. Correct. He's doing pretty well here, I got to say. Yes. Yeah. All right. Next question. Mel Gibson is married to which actress slash director in the 2011 dramedy The Beaver? Jodie Foster. Okay. Next up. How many Oscars has Jim Carrey been nominated for? Say one. Incorrect. It's zero. No, not Truman Show? Robbery. He should have been nominated for Truman Show. That's what I'll say. Ed Harris got the nomination for that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, should have got. All one. right. All right. So, how many questions is that so far, Goddard? Um, I know he's missed two, so I think he's four and two. So that's right. six total. 
make sure that's right. right one two three four he's gotten right mm-hmm. missed winstead and he missed jim carrey so he's four and two we got four questions left here you got to yep. get all these right to keep you gotta your go perfect here. you got to go all perfect right. keep let's your go. dignity here all right let's go um carmen and Juni cortez are the lead characters of what children's franchise spy kids Correct. Good, good, good pull. Wow. Good pull. What a, what a guess. Woo. Oh my hey, Lord. You gave me a trick question with Oscar when you said, <laughs> how many did he get nominated? Let's go. All right. All right. Um, which actor has roles in the following films, four rooms, Frida life itself and pain and glory. Antonio Banderas. All right. So he gets the, he gets the extra two there. So now he's six and two got two questions left here. Two questions left. Okay. Um, which are, which Oscar winner directed the film Siriana? Oh God, what's his name? Oh shit! <laughs> Can't swear oh. on the show. <laughs> I, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, Five, four, three, two, one. I can't. Remember. I can't no pull, time. Oh, I can't pull his name. Nope. Oh, Give me the first Steven, name. Steven. S- Steven. Matt Sodenberg. Um, no, I don't remember. Stephen Gagan. Yeah, um, Gagan. He's a screenwriter first and he's foremost. A screenwriter. And then, yeah, okay. Which Oscar winner directed? All right. Well, so yeah, we're gonna give you. Give you got one. it. You can at least try to keep some of your pride if you get Seven, this last yeah. one here. Yep. Um, you will find the basketball player Jackie Moon, famous for his disco hit "Love Me Sexy." There you go. You get seven of ten, guys. So. Seven of ten. Uh, and I'll say the the that Truman Show one was a little not Truman Show, but I said Truman Show. That was a tricky one because you did imply that he had been nominated. It was a trick question. I didn't imply anything. I just said how many Oscars has Jim Carrey? Yeah, been that implies for? that he was nominated. <laughs> so I really was question, like, that was the only question, movie. JT, that he, do you know what yeah. my answer would have been? What? Zero, because I know the freaking answer to the question. Understood, but you guys, if you don't know it, and you're saying. Okay, if he was nominated once, the only time he was in the conversation to be nominated okay, was Truman Show. Would would you have gotten wrong if he said how many Oscars has Tom Cruise won? Uh, no, I would. He won zero. Exactly. But he had been, but he'd been nominated several times, and but he should have won for the Fourth of July. That's not the question, though. But he by by you saying that, I know Tom Cruise was nominated for Oscars, and by the way, he's saying with Jim Carrey, then I immediately go to the fact, oh, he must have been nominated for Oscars. Why would he ask this question? Hey, man, I'll tell you why what. This is a trick question. Why would I ask accuracy. if how many, how many Oscars has Tom Cruise won if he's won zero? This is yeah, the same save it for, thing. Save it for the ring, fellas. Save it for the <laughs> ring on never. Friday. How many, how many times has Ben Goddard beat JT? I'm going to tell you it's going to be zero. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good. For, hey, look, man. How many times did JT mention 2017's results in this uh, in this backstage 30-minute interview? A lot of times. A lot of times. The limit That's, does not exist. First of all, I'm horrible with the years, so I couldn't even tell you what year any of my matches were. You got, so, hey, look, you got Lion that King, comment right? was horrible. Yeah, Lion, Lion King. King right? I, it was a shot in the dark. It was year 94 or 95. Dwayne Burke, our producer, says some of those aren't round one questions. Yeah, it's fair. That's fair. There, there were, there were thank those, you. Those, that was probably like more of like 10 questions from, you know, back Do you when you used that, to win matches in 2017. Well, would that Jim Carrey question be asked in the actual showdown match? I don't think so. I think there would be a challenge. I don't think there would be a challenge. Be. And you, there would be a challenge, and you would say, you implied that he actually was nominated. I want to give a big thank you to Kelly and Kyle for uh, yes. thank for, you, for, Kelly. Stirring, for, for stirring the pot here and getting JT flustered because he's pissed. Thank God um, Ben is not in charge of questions for the showdown. I, I didn't even write those questions. Now I'm talking um, about need, both of you. <laughs> I need uh, I need. To, we got to read out these, uh, these stream labs and these super yes. chats here while we have All JT. All right, let's go. Let's fly through them. Okay, um, Blood Ocean says, let's see what you got, JTE. Thank you for contributing. Uh, Christopher Engel, five-pointer and Sly and Arnie. What European country is Arnie's Prince Hoppy from in 2004's Around the World in 80 Days? Oh, my God. The, Jim K- the Jackie Chan movie? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you. It was somewhere like some European country. I couldn't tell you. Yeah, it's a, that's a no clue on this one. Yeah, uh, no clue. What is it? It's Europe? Turkey. Europe. Turkey. Hoppy, okay. yeah, sure. First of all, not a very good movie. <laughs> oh, no, it's a bad, it's a very bad movie. Uh, Fool's Gill, JTE. Is there anyone in singles or teams you want to take on? Are you interested in a JTE versus Snyder, too? Listen, I mean, I will face Snyder if he is somebody I have to face to go get a belt. I said this earlier and I mean it. I would love to play uh, Ben Bateman, I would love to play Dan Merle, <laughs> probably Dan Merle more just because working with Dan for so many years. Uh, I kind of know his taste. I know what he's good and bad at. And I feel like I've watched matches and I'm like, I 
Dan should have known that I could beat this guy. And I feel Ben, you, I will give you credit. You went and studied years and release dates to the point where it is probably the biggest strength for you. And I think most people will tell you that's a weakness for them to scroll down. You found the one thing that most people were weak in, and you strengthened that. And I give you a lot of credit for that. Uh, I just don't have, I guess I'll have to start studying years, but so you would be a tough match, but I feel like, again, I've seen you miss one category. Questions. I've seen you miss questions that I'm like, wow, I'm surprised you missed that. But you could say that about any competitor in Schmodown. You definitely everybody, could. Everybody has their strengths and everybody has the movies that they have a personal attachment to. Like there's certain movies that you, most people will be like, why would you know that? I know it because I saw it at this age and I remember this and I liked it for a certain reason. So your personal taste and your personal experience watching movies comes into play in Schmodown and sometimes at the worst and best times. Hey man, look, it, it, it's, I said this to Lon earlier, but I put a lot of work in and going back to that tournament season in 2019, my record ever since is 11 and four. I feel yeah. pretty good about that. Listen, Teams and singles. St- it's a good record. You, I think you definitely are one of the players that ushered in the studying like a madman <laughs> to the point where you've elevated your, cause when you first entered the show down, I'll be honest with you, it was not scared of you at all. I was like, he's not bad. He knows action movies, but he is not a strong enough player, but you took on the aspect of studying to another level. I think where a lot of us are players were like, this guy ain't joking around. He's, I think you were making cards. I mean, the, there's <laughs> stories of what there's, there's stories about the kind of studying you did. So I give you a lot of credit for literally ushering in kind of a new type of player for the showdown. So, cause yeah, a lot of us were just people who grew up like Drew McGuinney covering movies, talking, writing, and we just had this depth of knowledge you came in and said, I'm not up to par with these guys, but I'm going to be. And you studied your way up to there. So I give you credit for that. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. We, uh, what, what do we got before we go, let JTE go here? Uh, I got a few more. Gabriel LaRoe, JTE, do you honestly think the old law would have a shot in hell at beating Bateman? I say <laughs> that when he faced the boss, he will get outlawed. Absolutely. I'm impressed. You know, I studied with Roken. I'm impressed with some of the things he knows, things that I don't know. Uh, so yeah, he has a very strong movie knowledge and I, he's proven that I don't, I don't need to say it. I think Roka is, could be anybody on a good day. Uh, and that goes for a lot of the great players in the small down. They give the right day and the right questions. We could be anybody for sure. Uh, Dagan, uh, the Patriots, Roka, and a few others are what got me into the Schmodown. So, JTE, nice to see you back in the league. How has it been uh, readapting yourself into the game in 2021? And how is it working with Dagnino again? Great work with Dagnino. You know, the faction thing's new to me. I, this is the first time I've been part of a faction, and I really like it because, I'll be honest, I only worried about me and Jeff when we played back in the day. I didn't care about everybody else. They were just people I'm going to have to beat. To have this, you know, faction and all these players, I'm so much more invested. I feel like I'm rooting. I'm watching way more after shows than I used to. And I feel just like, you know, I want to watch these younger players succeed. And it's it's actually a lot more rewarding in some ways because maybe I'll have a bad game and I'll lose. But I get to watch guys like Khan, like Ty, like Griffey Noob, and just going out there and showing people what they're made of. And it's just, it's made it a whole different kind of game to me. I love this whole faction nonsense. It's great. Nice. And uh, Theral, uh, Unfiction, uh, like if JT wins on Friday, um, S rank fast food choice for meals. So I know a lot of uh, like mm-hmm. call to action has done like their tier ranking. Give me a few of your top rated fast food places. I mean, you gotta, you know, I mean, in and out for sure, right, Ben? Absolutely, in and out's, in and out's a top choice. Yeah, I think yeah. that's, I think you got to put it in and out on the S tier. I think for me, pers- I mean, this is just personal opinion. If we're talking pure fast food. I do put Jack in the Box in the S tier. I know some people wow. disagree. Wow. But I just that think is, like the wow. sourdough jack is a legendary sandwich. It's like that one of those is, great sandwiches. The last of time, time. Uh, yeah. Ben Bateman ever hosts backstage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate your contributions to the network. That then, is, but... I am up at 2 a.m. in Hollywood and I'm drunk and I need garbage just to. That's, and, yes. and when you want that, there is but nothing yeah, better, but, which is what, what's the point of fast food if it's not that? We're talking like if you're going to be an all timer, you need to be good during the lunch hour, right. dinner. You know, you need to be good at all times. So I, I find it to be delicious at all times. I think I think wow. I got to say Taco Bell is S tier for me. Uh, nope. See, they um, they were until they nuke their whole menu. Like they just they mm-hmm. they changed their whole menu and I haven't gone back since. You know what, Popeyes, that chicken sandwich changed the game. Uh, I was I would not have put them up towards the top, but that chicken sandwich they came out. It's a reason. It's a phenomenon because it's amazing and i think that escalated amazing. to yeah, another it's, level it's and then sandwich. john k sir says say my name <laughs> k sir and that's all of them 
Excellent. Uh, JTE, you were, a, you were a ray of sunshine on the show today, my friend. Thank best you. of luck this Friday taking on this dunce. Well, Goddard, best of luck on Friday taking on this dunce. Uh, I can't wait to watch the match. It's going to be great. Um, you know, you almost you almost got the eight or nine of ten that you wanted, but, you know, maybe you just study a little bit more. When you have when you have you back on next yeah. time, you know, maybe we'll do a little I better. Still, I still argue that Truman Show. Go ahead, people. Hit the comments. That Truman Show was a it was a dirty ploy to get me a negative. <laughs> and I, I did say Ramona Flowers before – the last second. Yeah, so. that's not her name. Ramona Flowers. That's the character. <laughs> yeah, I know, Scott but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that, I don't Mary think that quite Winston. qualifies. I don't think that quite qualifies under uh, the, the the benefit, benefit of the, the doubt. doubt rule. Yeah, I don't think okay. that's going to quite work in a match. Got but best of luck against it. Goddard with that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um. All right. Excellent. Well, uh, JTE, I will talk to you soon. Best of luck Friday. Best of luck in the teams tournament, and uh, say hi to your captain, Greg the Barbarian, for me. <laughs> you son of a. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> All right. Look at that guy. Cantankerous, Goddard. How are you feeling about that? Are you ready for Friday? Oh, I'm, I, I, now I'm even more ready, <laughs> honestly. Oh, that felt great. Yeah. Yeah. He's, Zero is uh, a number, people. Just uh, just let you know for all the kids out there studying the big mass out there in school. Don't, don't couldn't work out any. He truly couldn't have answered. Couldn't have worked out any better than that for <laughs> for him to for him to come in and actually and actually guarantee, but then get that close and say Ramona Flowers. I mean, it's it's uh, like the man is he's a unicorn. You can't actually make him up. Yeah. Um. So guys, we've got about twenty five minutes left of the show, and we have one of our Schmodown rookies who uh, is entering the fray here. Uh, somebody, somebody who that we're all very, very excited to see uh, Jessica's first match coming up this week. Uh, we welcome to the show right now, Jessica Schloth. Uh, she is just entering the Schmodown right now. She's going to be playing against Beth May this week. It's available on Patreon right now to, to all fans. If you guys are patrons at patreon.com slash Schmodown. Uh, and we get to meet her today and talk to her on the show. We've, I've never gotten to talk to Jessica. So Jessica uh, welcome Schloth, to the show. by the way, Schloth. Okay. I, I apologize for the mispronunciation. Um, I, I have a name like that, that I guess mispronounced and I have my whole life. Not the one you guys hear on camera here though. Um, Welcome to the show, Jessica. We welcome you to Shmoda on Backstage. I appreciate you making time to come on. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yes, of course. Of course. I apologize for, for uh, mispronouncing your name. Yep. Usually the second try, people get it. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, welcome to the league. Welcome to the movie trivia Shmodown. This is, uh, you, were, you, you were on audition tape signing in the Shmodown. Am I correct about this? You are correct. Yeah. I saw that, like announcement that was made um i remember and i was like uh i'm not gonna do that like that's interesting but even though my whole family has always been like telling me that i should be a part of it i'm like dad you don't understand like (laughs) i live across the country and then you know the digital stuff happened and like i considered it and then i got a message from abby friel people know her and uh, she reached out to me and told me I should audition. And so I thought about it and I shot, shooted my shot, shot my shot. Have you <laughs> seen that? <laughs> so yeah, and then it just kind of went from there. Were you uh, like a movie trivia uh, enthusiast? Did you play in fan leagues? What, what was your background with this type of stuff? No, I did not. I did not join any fan leagues. That's also why I was like hesitant because they always say to start there. And I was like, "Eh, I don't really have the time, but then I did it. I don't know. So I did not do fan leagues. I have not been great at trivia. I didn't think that I would um, be able to do this, but I prepared and tried my best, so. Well, so your first match is coming up this week against Beth May. Um, Everyone's gonna get to see that very, very soon. It's available on Patreon right now. And, is Beth somebody that you would ever interact with or is, or is Beth May somebody that you, this is, this will be the first time. Well, I am a fan of the show. So I've been a member of the Facebook group for a very long time now. And uh, so I saw her videos when they first were, you know, um, on the internet. And (laughs) (laughs) yeah, so I saw that and I was like, she's a person that, seems like a lot um and then when i found out i was gonna play her i was like not really knowing what to expect so uh just kind of went in thinking about how i'm gonna play and working on myself and make sure i'm prepared 
what's your background with movies? Are you just like a lifelong movie fan? Or I mean, is or do you do you blog about them? Do you do YouTube reviews, anything? Or you just, just purely love movies? Yeah, no, I just kind of, I'm not even that big of a movie buff, if I'm being honest. Like a lot of people <laughs> come in, like I, I enjoy them and it's like my escape and stuff. But um, no, I don't have fun letterbox I like to do, but I don't review <laughs> movies professionally, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I'm actually a student right now, so that's what takes up a lot of my time. But I remember in college is when I kind of just got into watching movies. And that was something me and my best friend Grace did a lot together is we would go to the movies. That would be our like thing we did together. So that's how I kind of started watching it and being more frequent viewer. Cool. Um, you're, you're on the den with, with Kate Mulligan, who's a uh, wonderful, great person, great, good friend of mine, Thank hell you. of a character and a very, very committed manager. Also your faction mate, Ben Goddard here, he was here on the show here. He was just getting verbally assaulted by JTE a minute ago. Um, talk to me a little bit about, you know, that process of being involved with that faction, uh, getting to know is a whole group of strangers. I'm assuming people you'd never interacted with prior to this. Yeah, kind of, but now we're all very <laughs> close. Like everyone, yeah, all the factions kind of say, oh, we're a family, this group dynamic, but like all of our, like I think Kate was pretty smart when she drafted because she considered like personalities and how people would get along and who would be invested. And so we're all like-minded people who are all determined and hardworking and so we spend a lot of time together um and so even though they were strangers at the start i feel really close and connected to my fellow That's awesome. mates That's it's a good it's a good group for sure and and obviously uh it's a bootstraps a little bit of an underdog group i think based on last year's results of course is all i mean um and so yeah. <laughs> i mean i'm just be, i'm just trying to call it like i see it here Normally that squint actually is just Ben Goddard coming in over the speaker and giving me a hard time for saying it. Oh, I'm waiting. Um, I'm waiting. Don't you worry. <laughs> um, but so, I mean, Goddard, like when, you know, when you're, you're, you're at this point a veteran, you know, you've had the full year under your belt, you, you bring in a, a rookie like Jessica. What's that like? I mean, talk to me a little bit about uh, building the communal vibe. You know, you had the experience last year on the den, you bring in rookies. I, I would love to hear from your perspective as well. You know, how do you guys bring in the rookies? Uh, we did our homework, honestly. Like I, I messaged quite a few people. I, you know, I don't want to say I had a dossier and, you know, uh, pat myself on the back too much like the exchange does, but I messaged quite a few people and how interested they were and what they wanted from a team because like I did want that. Like I wanted that team study session vibe. Like I wanted to get together and actually feel like a faction because like, like the, this year we've seen is just even compared to last year seems so much more competitive and just like neck and neck every single match. And so that's what I wanted. And I knew that was going to be. And Jess was was hungry for that too. Like people can say, you know, oh, she's so soft-spoken. Like you guys aren't in these study sessions. She's the very opposite of that. I Trust me. And this girl knows her stuff. And uh, I'm excited to have her on the den. And I'm excited that she's got a big future in this league and on this team. And I'm about it. Exactly. Bradley Tingle says, yes, the den has a Rolodex. We don't have a, a dossier. We got the old school Rolodex on, on my, on my desk. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, uh, division to division, there's obviously at different moments, there's different focuses. And so, you know, you've got your singles match that's, that's dropping this week. Everyone's going to get to watch that one. Um, is, are, are any of these other divisions, I mean, teams, inner geekdom, is this something that's crossed your mind at all? Or right now, are you just kind of just focused on singles uh, trying to get that done? Um, I'd definitely love to be a part of a team. That would be definitely exciting um, because I like having support and I'm a team player. So <laughs> just in life. <laughs> and uh, I think that'd be nice because I think I have um, specific interests and like, like if you look at all the categories, I think the ones where I would like put at the top of my list are not always the ones that the majority of the players would say are their, you know, favorite categories that they'd be interested in answering questions. And so I think having a teammate where like someone they would balance and I could fill those areas where they are not as strong in 
that's what's interesting about teams to me is like finding that like matchmaking scenario where people balance out. You said you were a fan of the show for a long time. Did you have a couple favorite players that you followed over the years that really inspired you to want to do this? Well, I went to Florida State University. I just graduated in 2020. So um, Dan has always been someone, which is the go-to answer, but (laughs) he's very easy to like. So that's one thing. Um, But like, I've been a patron of yours in my life. So not now. Of mine personally. Yes. (laughs) Thank you. Thank Um, you. You're welcome. And so, yeah, I've been fans. Not anymore of- though. Not anymore. Uh, we, we rem- <laughs> we, once she got drafted, we, uh, we went through her bank statements and made sure everything was uh, nice and on the up and up. For I just imagine, purposes. I can just imagine Preston coming across the information, just blowing a gasket, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I don't know if he knows that, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's, that's awesome. Uh, I think it's, it's, I think it's so cool to see, like you said, you know, you, 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 not a reviewer, not somebody who um, had his huge background in this stuff, but just to be a, a pure, true fan of the show um, and, to, and to do it off of an audition tape. I think that's also the other thing is, you know, so many of the people who are involved now, they like they're a writer for comicbook.com or they, you know, they're just like, you kind of have seen them around or maybe they interact all the time or they're on the after shows all the time. But purely on audition tape, I think is a really, that's quite an accomplishment. That's something that's really hard to do. And I know no, there was something that was close to like 700 audition tapes that got sent in or something like that. Yeah. When I saw like that, my name was like, cause I found out when everyone else did, you know, like certain ones are getting posted early and all that, but like the main list that got dropped that all that one time and my name was on it and I was like, so shocked. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, and another thing too, is like, even if people aren't like in the movie space or something, a lot of people are still like, on camera a lot and that's not something I'm quite used to like I have online classes now so I'm used to that but I, it's not being <laughs> scrutinized you know so um that's something I still have to adjust to but the on-camera aspect of it mm-hmm. Which, yeah I mean normally <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah it's fair yeah well I mean it's also totally different too with uh with this stuff with the like the digital stuff um you know it's so much more time right like this this conversation we're like literally having on Shmodan backstage is more conversation that the audience would ever get to watch you have than you would have ever had in a studio match day. Like that in those days you show up, you see the studio, you shoot your promos, you go on the table. Maybe you talk smack for a second. Maybe you say something like we're heels. Um, you know, you some- I would never, I don't know who would hey, ever Jess, do that. If you could pick one player to have a match with this year, who would it be and why? Who posted that? Got it. Uh, that was that was Liz Gaska, and it says, "Hey Jess, if you could pick one player to have a match with this year, who would it be, and why?" Sorry, I zoned out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> who would I want to play? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm interested in like whoever, like a dream scenario. Who who do I think I could beat? Because those are different questions, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's fair. You could, but, but what if you had your best day? I guess let's assume that you had your best day and you could beat anybody who is you want to play. <laughs> it, I have noticed, like, because be, being a fan, you're like, oh, that, that person is so good. Like, they hardly ever get questions wrong. And it's like the more I've been putting in time and like practicing and all that, like, and I think someone has said it already, like, anyone can beat anyone, like, on a yeah. good day. Um, 100%. As long as you tried. <laughs> like you can't. If just, you, but. Yeah, if you prepare, I mean, you, so you, you're welcome to answer the question, or if you don't have a good answer, then I also. I honestly don't have a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just, I think anybody. Oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying I'm prepared for what's ahead of me, but I'm open to whatever. I think anybody can beat anyone and especially in the three round format, that's the place I've started to notice it the most this last year is that in the old days, because the round one questions tended to be a little harder and you could have such a swingy round three. um, The fives obviously were so inconsistent for so, for such a long time. These days there is a lot more effort put into round one being a little more even um, 
round two is inherently a little more studyable because the game, that's what the game has become. So many people are so focused on that. And round three, there are more gettable questions. And so it feels like the, the game comes down to the five a lot of the time now. Um, and if you get your five and your opponent doesn't, that can decide the game, even if they were beating you the whole game pretty handily. Um, mm-hmm. There's less points. There's less points available. It's actually, that's actually an interesting question. And, and I don't know if you've thought about this before, but Goddard, I would love to know your thought on this because it's something I've been thinking about a lot. Mm-hmm. What's up? Teams, you do six questions in round two and singles, you do four. And the idea being that with two people working together, there's more opportunity. So, you know, like the six question thing, that's why. But why doesn't singles just do six questions in round two? It would mean that the five point question and the weight of it is invalidated a little bit more like it is in teams. You are able to get further ahead or or you have a greater opportunity to catch up in a way that isn't just based on one question. Because right now, the five point question is worth more than 50% of your entire round two. Right. If you changed it so that it was six, six questions worth two each, it would be worth less than half of what the second round actually equates to. Is that like a, something you guys have thought about or would agree on? I mean, I just just a thought experiment for now. I, I do like that. You're never it's not about truly being out of the match. I understand what you're saying completely. Um, but it's I do like that. You're never out of the match if you have a bad round two. Um I could, I could see it go into five questions, you know, like inner geekdom does five questions, I think would be good. Cause you know, you could have a stronger round two or possibly a worse round two, you know, like opponent's choice could hit even harder, but even nowadays, like we've seen, you know, we just had Lon Harris on the thing. Like he got horror. He was strong in horror. We like Lon knows his horror movies and he got KO'd by Adam Collins that day. And it, it still happens. And those are two great competitors. Like Lon is, possibly outside of Paul Preston, maybe the best competitor in the league without a belt right now, like well, off the top of my head. Um, and so seeing him get KO'd that day with the category that I know he's pretty decent in. So like, I, I do understand what you're saying, but I am okay with four questions and eight points, but I get that you say like, you know, the five pointers worth more than half of round two. I do understand that. Yeah. What do you think, Jess? Yeah. Um, like I sometimes do. I think I disagree a little bit with Ben. Um, I do. Which, which, but which, but which Ben? But which ben? Which one? <laughs> There's so many to disagree with. <laughs> I just think it is kind of because you go through a whole like in a singles match, you go through that all those questions, and you like if you feel accomplished in getting those questions right, and then like that can all be taken away with the five pointer like and how much it's weighted and it kind of makes the drama like controversy of like when things are easier like people think a five point question is easier or harder or like unfairness it's just if there are more questions in round two I I think that would be a good solution to make it not as like the linchpin of the match because it feels like it almost invalidates the rest of what happened yeah there's only i mean it's interesting i've talked to christian about this before and i not this specific point but the idea of making changes to the format and his point is always like anything we come up with it it has to be such a simple and easy to understand change to the format because it's worked this way for so long and the league has grown and become the incredible product that it is that it is based on the things that we've done so like one of the most famous major changes that ever happened was when the round three one pointer became a two pointer that was something that they did like season four i think um and it was a good change it's a correct change the math works out it makes a lot of sense when you think about the final round two plus three is five the way that that actually breaks down that they can be even you can hit your two hit your three if they miss their five they often even the score back out if it's a close match so that just does make a lot more sense but changes like that it's such a simple and easy change anything about like betting a certain number of points or, you know, picking category numbers or drafting them sort of like the things that the fan leagues do. It's just the more complicated it gets, the harder it is to implement and for new people and new players and new fans to fully understand it right away. You want them to be able to understand it right away. But this is where I think something like an extra two questions in round two is pretty easy to understand. That doesn't, that doesn't feel like a drastic change to me. And if like, I don't know. So when, people are studying like you spend all this time on certain categories and you're like 
only four like <laughs> I'm answering like you know like 50 practice questions from one category and it's like but I'll only get four <laughs> so like does it really matter? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, it's all, it's all, this is, this is like as the game develops and evolves and we all talk about it as fans uh, and people that play it. I mean, this is kind of what it's all about is, is figuring that stuff out. Um, we have a couple Streamlabs and Super Chats. Um, I'm going to read the first one here. Um, or actually this is read twice here. Goddard, let me know if you have any in the, in the labs. I have one from Ryan here. Big salute to you, Ryan. Thanks for donating. Hey, Jessica, everyone wants to know what's the story with your sloth. Also welcome to the Schmodown. Great question. Um, it feel so I'm worried it's confusing people because my favorite animal is a sloth and a lot of people mispronounce my last name and they say sloth. And so that's not to help you remember it. It's wrong. <laughs> um, I like sloths a lot. I have way too many um, stuffed animals. Like this is my whiteboard right here has a it's slot there. Um, yep, I got a little one here too. So it's not just the big one that I think is creeping some people out. I see from the chat. Uh, I apologize, but <laughs> yeah, I just it's my giant slot. It's my favorite animal. Okay, fair That's enough. <laughs> Um, Goddard, let me know if we have any to read here. Otherwise, I'm going to get into our uh, wrap up stuff. Um, so, are, just one from Cutter Hale no love for Waterburger. Taco Bell sucks. <laughs> Waterburger is pretty good. I mean, it's regional, though. It's regional. Those regional ones are harder to, I feel like, to rate. That's like a Texas thing, primarily, I think. I mean, in and out's regional. Yeah, I guess it's Waterburger true. is in Florida, too. Okay, so it's not as regional experience. as I thought. <laughs> I like Whataburger. I do. I'm a fan, I'm a fan of Whataburger. I was impressed when I when I tried Whataburger. Um, so guys, there's a few things coming up this week. Be, be sure to check out Jess's first match uh, against Beth May. It is dropping this week. You guys can watch it right now. Dropped yesterday on Patreon, patreon.com slash Shmodan. Become a $10 patron. You get literally everything. You get all the matches. You get all the exhibitions. It all comes to you right away, including your ticket to this Saturday's free-for-all. We so far have 36 unannounced competitors to be joining the four that have been announced. It's going to be an awesome event. Uh, get your tickets right now, theshmodownlive.com, or just become a $10 patron, and you will have access to it. It should be almost like a five-hour event, which is wild uh, as a pay-per-view event. It's one of the most fun ones that we ever get to do. Uh, and, yeah, enjoy enjoy the free-for-all this Saturday, guys. Otherwise, we have JTE versus Ben Goddard on Fridays. We talked about um, so much content coming out. And at 3 p.m. today, as we do every single week over on twitch.tv slash the Schmodown, you guys can watch the FCL. There are brand new FCL matches streaming and airing live on Twitch every single week. So tons of stuff happening in the Schmodown. Um, Jess, is there any place that you are doing content or anything at uh, Twitter or something people want to follow you? How can they, how can they track what you're doing? nothing really i mean i'm not <laughs> not doing this for followers i just want to play so okay rock and roll maybe Fair i should enough. start a podcast <laughs> i mean yeah their podcasts are fun talking about movies with your friends is always a good time you guys could just you can dent the den talks movies or something i'm sure you guys would have a good time doing it internally um all right well we're gonna let you go thank you so much for guesting on the show uh, best of luck thank with your match this week and uh for the rest of the season and um yeah guys thanks for thanks for hanging out Bye. all right guys